Cool, lads. Everyone can hear me? Just, yeah, great. We're just going to give yeah. it another, just another minute, lads, just for anyone who's like turning up. Right, let's crack on with this. How are we all doing? I hope you're all good. Um, so the first thing is John's asked me to pass on the message, guys, that um, we're planning to do Spartan. Um, <clears throat> what's the rugby grade? Chat at Twickenham. Um, I think it's in December. Um, so let me read it out exactly what he said. Um, <clears throat> Can you mention to uh, about Spartan reduced? There's a reduced rate for everyone if we can get a minimum of five lads signed up before the uh, 9th of September. So if you know that you want to come and do Spartan um, <clears throat> and you want to come and join the group, message John, guys. The, there's no point in you going to do Spartan by yourself if we're all like a group of us is going to go and do it together. If if you have already booked into Spartan, then message John and tell him that you are and we'll see if we can get the same running time so we can go as a group. Um, and what we'll do is we get some t-shirts together um, so we can all wear the same t-shirts. <coughs> so you'll need to get a hold of him like as soon as this, as, as this is finished, message him, tell him that you're interested. Um, and then Monday, I'm sure he'll get to work in terms of trying to get this sorted out. What's the date now? Okay, so we've got about five days. And I'll put a message up in a group as well. It'd be great to get a, a huge group of guys together to go up and do that um, as well. So in terms of uh, this year, so um, this month, we're going to be focused, starting from Monday, we're going to be working on a, a mental resilience um, video series. Um, so the whole point of that series is really to use as a set of, um, fucking everyone's coming in late, um, is a set of tools in terms of referring to. So I'm gonna be going into the, um, next week, going into the courses and just breaking the courses down a little bit more. All of the video resources that you have at the minute, they're a bit messy at the minute. Um, so we want to um, break them down. So like the back to basics videos, have them separately. Um, have these videos uh, zero, series done separately and kind of each month we're going to be having a theme um, apart from um, August and December. Um, <clears throat> and then we, so for each video for each month that we do, I'm almost going to kind of create uh, a brand new course. So it's an easy directory for you just to go in and go, right, I'm struggling with mental resilience. Oh, I'm struggling with change. Bang, I can watch that video. Okay, the whole point of like being here is to continue. If you think about most people here, they come through the 28 days, you followed a series of video modules that helped you progress. You should be adapting that same mentality and same structure is that like, hey, look, mon say Monday, Wednesday and Friday, if I watch one video in the morning to get me psyched for the day, to get me focused for the day, um, that could make me feel a little bit more positive, that can make me feel a little bit more engaged, a little bit more hungry, ready for the day, right? Ready to deal with any of the distractions. Um, the, the one that we're gonna be doing in October is just going into a little bit more detail of the morning routine, more of the psychology of getting up and what we're trying to do and moving forwards. Thursday um, is gonna, sorry, Thursday. November is gonna be about uh, forward planning, all right? so what do we need to do in terms of planning for 2022? Um, I think that's going to be a really important one. We're going to be doing some vision boards as well. With a, we did one last year for those that were here last year, um, creating vision boards alongside building for 2022. Um, we've got Create Your Mission Workshop in Birmingham on um, Saturday. So I'm running it just for 15 guys um, to help those guys that are struggling to create a 10 year vision. Um, we're going to reverse engineer it and then we're going to plan in detail your 2022. All right. That's so if you want to come to that, just drop me a message and we'll get you on. We've got the big seminar at the end of the, at the end of November, which is remember the mission. 
Um, that's at Aston Villa Stadium. Um, and um, that's going to be brilliant. That's going to be exciting. I've got two guest ex- uh, speakers coming on board. Um, one's Martin Stapleton, who is an M- MMA champion. So he's going to be talking about um, fighting for structure in life. One's Dr. Tom Waller. Some of you might have listened to his podcast that I did. So he's talking about being congruent with your mission. Um, there's a couple of lads as well who are going to do a 20 minute inspirational chat um, uh, as well. So we're hoping to get 100 guys in there as well. Um, the second book's coming out next month. Okay, so a bit of reading for you as well um, in terms of, of that. So there's loads going on, all right, this year. There's loads and loads of going on. We're doing a, the next mastermind meet is going to be in January and we're looking to do paintballing. Um, so we're going to do paintballing in the morning and then in the afternoon, we're going to do a seminar. But the seminar is going to be a little different in terms of the way that we show up and everything that we're doing. I'm trying to make everything a lot more uniform. Uh, uniformed i'm trying to build up um i want us to start becoming more of a community together so there's going to be lots of little things that when we meet up there's you'll see i'll surprise you when we get closer to the time okay um we also are looking at um uh, creating a man coach pin badge um where you will receive like a bronze, silver or gold one, depending on the amount of time that you've been in the mastermind, depending on your achievements as well. Um, Very much looking like this picture. What we've got to try and do is find someone that can do it well. So we want a pin that looks like that. And then you can kind of pin it to your jumper or your t-shirt or or your suit jacket or whatever it is that you're doing. And you kind of belong to that community as well. Um, No, there won't be an audio book probably till next year. I literally cannot get in the studio anywhere at the minute. So um, it's something I'm working on. So it's just going to be Kindle and paperback for now. Um, If you can't read, you can ask your missus to read for you. Bedtime story. Cool. So I've got a specific question that I'm going to ask you. So if you do want to come on, in fact, I'm going to pick some random. Fuck you. John Tarling. That was random. Hello. You're right in the middle of my screen. Okay, so tell me what the number one thing is stopping you from um, reaching your potential at the minute. Oh, I, I, I keep um, <clears throat> procrastinating. Okay, what are you procrastinating about? I don't know. I think it's actually like uh, summer holidays have actually knocked me back a little bit. Welcome to the club. I've lost my routines. I still, I still do my morning routine. Good, but I feel like everything else has changed, and and I've What's lost changed? my focus a little bit through the summer. Oh, okay. The routines changed. Yeah. So basically, my main goal for last year was to do a rat race event, the Man versus Coast. Yep. And uh, did that, smashed that in July, and then since then. I've, I've, I'm, I've just dropped a little bit. The intensity's dropped, which is okay to do that. I've been on holiday yet, blah, blah, blah. I need to get back into it. And I am. I've booked a half marathon for a couple of months, but yeah, I just like need to find that gear again. So that how are you going to do that? Sorry? How are you going to do that now? Uh, I need to go back to the basics, I think, in all honesty. Um, and just... <clears throat> Rain it in again, find myself, build so it up from the... that process. <laughs> I need to do it now. I need to do it now. Than not yeah. saying I'm going to do that process, okay. or you know. Um, well, have you just... plan next week? Show me your planner for next week. Show me your timetable for next week. My timetable. There. Good. All right. So that's the start. That's good. Yeah. That's, yeah. a, that's a start, right? And then, <laughs> and then you got all my other bits and bobs there. Perfect. That's and the start. start. Right? It is a start. I, so just need I to... think what you're doing, John, is like what every dad like is it like. I'm the same. Like for me, I feel like I'm walking around with like concrete blocks on. It's like what the nerf is going on here? Like you know, a craving routine is something that's important. The good thing is that. You guys are at the top level of people that I teach. So all of you know how to build a routine. You all know how to structure stuff. So it's just a case of doing it. And it might not feel as brilliant as it did in July, 
okay it's, it's but you know it, there it, it, it you know how to do it. it it might feel like september is a grind month you know it's like oh my god yeah like, but do you know what i mean that's a great start it's good it's good and, and you know it's like it's my first summer holiday feeling like this if that makes sense like yeah. the kids yeah so we've got year one at school sort of thing and it's the first summer holiday where i've felt it as a family as such and, and enjoyed uh, it as a family. This it like oh, the, reason yeah. I did, the reason I didn't put any extra training out in in August is because you got enough going on. It's chaotic, and then it puts everyone under pressure. Like routines slip in August. August and October for me are the two months where things slip slightly. You know, everyone's on the piss at Christmas, especially this Christmas. Provide like you know, yeah. because last Christmas we missed last Christmas, didn't we? The build up to it. So yeah, everyone's on it everyone's like oh my god i've been trapped for the last 18 months so everyone's on it this august so but what you have done really well is recognize that and um i think there's an element of probably being hard on yourself again but you've done your plans you know manage the expectations that's it so reduce the expectations you know what you've got to achieve let's just go and achieve it let's stay that you know you're not trying to be for me an elite operator is someone that has really great self-awareness but really takes, takes the steps to start moving forwards. If that planner was blank, then we'd have issues. Right, okay. All right, thank you. All right. same, John, it's the same problem I think you have all the time. Expectations, John. Mm. Again. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So yeah. build into that, build in, ease in. Happy? Happy, thank Anything you, thank you. Me? Anything for me? No, keep it up, it's good, it's good. <laughs> like, yeah, it's good. Good man. All right. Good to talk to you. Yeah, man. Um, uh, yes, Darren, there are places. I think there's like five places left for the workshop, bub. Um, Patrick, let's go. Looking good right. in his jumper. Yeah, I found it in a um, box farm in Bex Hill. There's loads of them in there. Only <laughs> 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 totally kidding. Oh, uh, honestly, it honestly took favorite. me a minute to twig there. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is. It's my favourite. Um, Same question. So, um, the biggest thing stopping me, there's, there's kind of two sides of it, because the physical thing, Yep. Uh, I had an injury just after the half marathon, which meant a massive amount to me. It was so important that I did that. It taught me a load about what I can achieve. Brilliant. Um, you know, I was running three to five K, uh, and then I was comfortably running seven to ten miles you know no problem anytime and then of course the half marathon itself um had an injury just after that which has persisted i've had treatment and i've got to i've got to get to the bottom of that to stop me you know because I, I i still run but i'm doing short two three mile runs at the moment and pulling up with the uh, muscle problems and stuff so um i've got to get to the bottom of that uh, which is just about finding the right treatment i'm getting some treatment but i, I need to find some uh, Deep tissue sports massage, that's something like that. Are you in where are you, St. Leonard's? St. Leonard's, yeah. If you message me, I, my guy um, treats me every other week with um, um, needles. And it's not it's not right. acupuncture because that's more joints. This is more deep muscle um, repair. Ah. So you put it into the muscle, it triggers a deeper sense of, uh, um, oh, God, I can't think of the word. It's to basically impacts the muscle in terms of triggering the muscle to then yep. recover the muscle. So um, if you message me, I'll send you his number because he's in little. I'll, I'll definitely do that because it's, it's persisted so much. It's uh, yeah. really holding me back. Uh, I mean, it hasn't held me back mentally. I keep, you know, I've been doing stuff um, and enjoying it, but I just physically can't push that hard at the minute, which is frustrating. Okay. Uh, and, and because of the whole half marathon thing, the, the running became so important, become a massively important thing for me. Of course. Um, psychologically, it's almost, I've tried meditation quite a few times and I'm not, I, I, get, I get incredibly distracted because I start worrying about all the things I should be doing. That's, uh, all whereas, of, that's part of it though, mate. Yes, of, of course. And being able to switch off and, and just meditate. But I, I um, running is the meditation. I can... Okay. My mind goes, wanders all over the place in a very relaxed way. Okay. Uh, and, and somehow that physical activity helps me do that, helps me okay. defocus, if you like. Um, the other thing is the actual vision of the mission. I've, 
I don't struggle so much with the, the ten year plans and so on. I can I can see that. I've got various things in place and I'm making some progress towards it, which is really good. Um, the one that's really bothering me is that having the, the actual clear vision of what the, the mission is. And it, it, it's, I don't know, it's almost like there's some blockage to, to freeing up my ability to see that, my vision. So <clears throat> it breaks down into two. So your 10 year, for, from one year to 10 year is purely vision, right? It's purely like where would I love to be? It's purely reference points, okay? Yeah. And it's more like, um, like I always think like the one, three, five, seven, and 10, they're just checkpoints to move us forward. The mission becomes the 12 months, okay? Right. So if we said today, if you come to me, you said, all right, I wanna, let's work together. I want to, I want to like, I, I need to create my mission. I would say to you, right, go away and plan your year. This is the summer stuff we're gonna, this, so this is the type of stuff we're doing at the workshop but um, maybe in less detail, like over, over November with videos, is that the next year is the mission. Like what you do within between now uh, <clears throat> and day three to five is the mission. The rest of it is purely guidance. Does that make sense? Yes. So like when yeah. you're looking to do that, it's like, where do you want to be this time next year? Just, just if, if you don't have to answer that now, but when you go away, and you work on this, you kind of kind of say to yourself, well, okay, so in my health and within your health, it comes as a triage, comes as mental, emotional, and physical, right? Those three things are the fundamentals of the health pillar. Okay, how do I want to feel mentally? If you feel mentally good now, well, I just want to maintain that. I want to improve my meditation. I want to improve my morning routine. I want to improve my perspective of the mornings. I want to be able to bring myself back in the mornings because we don't always wake up like it's Disneyland, right? We wake up like apocalypse thinking. It's like, oh, doomsday, overthink, worst case scenario, yada, yada, yada. So what is like, and this is some of the stuff I'll be covering in October uh, on the video series, but it's like in the mornings, how do you bring yourself back? For me, a morning routine, has become um, more of a um, more of a fight back to the apocalyptic thinking of reflecting, mm. you know, and and I think that truly is a case of like over a year, how can you do it? How can you perform that so it becomes a second nature? How can it be natural so that you manage your emotions, your mental, and your physical states? Okay, mm. and then you're like, okay, well, where do I want to be in a year? What do I want to do for my personal development? Okay, do you, do you want to learn a language? Do you want to learn to play golf? Do you want to like um, be a better runner? Do, do, do you know what I mean? So it, there's lots of different elements there and then with your, do the same with your career and then your relationships. Now, the relationships very much has evolved into, from when I first started the pillar, it used to be what's the, what's, how do we nurture those relationships with loved ones, family, friends, children. But as it's evolved, I really feel that relationship with yourself has to come first, like loving yourself. Um, like I was talking to John there, not being hard on yourself, um, respecting yourself. And, and I think these things have to come first, respecting yourself so much that you wouldn't want to abuse yourself with alcohol because you felt bad. Abusing uh, your, your mind and beating yourself up. You know, one of the things I see a lot from other men and other people is that, yeah, I'm just a fat so or I'm just a fat slob. And, People are so, like, if, if I started calling people that, like, and starting putting people down like that, you'd be murdered. If we yeah, did that for our kids, we, like, you'd be like, how on earth can you, do, like, spot? it's still not acceptable to do it to yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So those, I've gone off on the tangent slightly here, but these are the things that over a year we want to be focusing on, okay? So, like, how do you build that relationship? Where do you want to... What do you want the relationship to look like? So I always look at the elite operator. The elite operator is your shadow. It's your, he's, he's your, if you like, imaginary friend, your internal accountability. That, and, and that elite operator is somebody that really, we, we want to define the character of that. We want, to, we want to be able to nurture ourselves better with that. So that actually when self-sabotage comes, you don't feel on your own. You kind of mm -hmm. feel like you've got this thing, like, and, and it sounds a bit weird, but that, I mean, that's how I bring myself back in the morning. It's like my lead operator saying, like, mate, what are you doing? What's going on here? This is not the way that we operate. This, this is the standard that we operate on. And 
having that conversation with myself is like having that conversation with an elite operator, bring yourself back to level. So there's the level playing. Here's elite operator. Here's apocalyptic thinking. And so when we wake up, mm-hmm. we're down here and bringing ourselves back up. And maybe these are things that for your vision, for your mission that you connect with, like I'm not in your mind. So you know what things that you need to focus on. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, the, the morning routine is the other thing I've flagged up. Um, I still do it, but it needs you're not more in it. strength. No, I'm not in it exactly, and it's you're, like you're on, you're unconscious in your morning routine. Yeah, I'm, yes, absolutely, and I think that is key because that time at the start of the day when no one else is around and you you steal like the golden hour, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's when you can get your mind right, and yeah. some there are times. Definitely, when I know that the 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 way I see it with the elite operator, it's like he's uh, I know when he's in me, you know, in, in yeah. my mind, in, in, yeah, yeah, in my yeah, body yeah. almost, and I can feel it because I'm making the right decisions, I'm calm and so on. He gets and, you out of bed. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, that, he, that's he or exactly he gets it. you out of yeah. bed when that alarm goes. Like <laughs> I had, some, <laughs> I woke up this morning. I heard people walking past. And I was like, fuck it, and it was daylight, and I thought it was like going to be like eight thirty, and I've missed this thing, but. <laughs> But like that spring out of bed, that's your elite operator going into fight mode. You know what I mean? So I think for you, your mission is now to go away and like, you know, and some of the training we're going to be doing over the next couple of months, I really feel is going to reinforce that in your mind, right? The the resilience training we're going to be doing this month, some of the things that we've been talking about for, for October, like that morning routine, the psychology about actually being present, not going through the motions in the morning, but actually like, really waking up and really engaging that more like taking it to the next level type of stuff right um and these are important key things as well um and if you really struggle then come up to birmingham and and come and do the seminar as well like you know or or the workshop so this is the sort of thing that i want to go with people and i can do that better on a face-to-face value and sitting down and going like you know what do you want in a 10 like 10 years because it's hard is everyone in here would be hard, you know? Um, I'm, I've got to do my three year review in October. And I, like John has said, off piste slightly from the summer. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta reevaluate, reevaluate. Anyway, um, I'll send me a message on the app and I'll send you Matt's number. Fantastic, I'll do that. Cheers, yeah. JB. No worries, mate, good job. Brilliant, thank you. Dom, because you, you will definitely hide if I don't pick you. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely was going to have. Good morning, James. I love your picture in the background. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice. Is yeah. that Africa? Is that are they elephants? Yeah, they are. They're, they're on the uh, on the plains. Yeah, it's. Um, I picked yeah. it up in Glastonbury. Actually, it's a nice picture. Yeah, nice. Um, same question. Um, <clears throat> probably, um, probably self doubt. Um, it's the thing that always niggles away at me. It's. Um, I'll do something and I'll get motivated and I'll um, I'll be creative and I'll I'll put something together like like with this business and then there's just something that um, this silly little thing inside that just kind of holds me back or makes me start to think why on earth would anyone listen to me about it or what have I got to say about it and it's just this crippling self doubt and I know how stupid it must look from the outside you know with who I am and and what I've done and my qualifications and all of that stuff and I I really can't explain what it is or or why I have it and I spend most of my life just battling to overcome it It, everything I do is trying to overcome this ridiculous self-doubt and lack of confidence Okay, Dom, two six. Hands up if you feel the way that Dom does. <laughs> That's good to see. Yeah, well, it's not so good. You to don't see. have to explain I mean. because yeah. everybody feels like, mate, every time I go on video, I'm like, that was shit. No one's going to listen to that. I, I do that all the time. I like you, you would have no idea. Like, and I'm, I'm open with you guys. I'm more than honest. Like, I always like end up having, like, oh my God, this man coach be closed down in six months. Like, honestly, like that all the time. Jem- Jemima has to live with that. Like, literally, constant. I have to constantly realign myself with my confidence all the time. Well, it's, it's interesting, James. 
Yeah, because uh, many times when I've watched your videos and heard you talk, it, it resonates so much because I think, shit, that's me. And, you know, your Jemima is my Jane. It, she yeah. has to put up with the same stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, and it's, and, and it's the, a lot of the stuff that I talk about is a lot of what's going through my head. I don't ever talk about what's on my mind or yeah. what I'm going through myself. It's just a, it's a documentation. Like, so everything I kind of talk to you about is probably kind of thing that I'm probably suffering with at that time. Well, like, just because like, I've been practicing probably personal development on myself, probably more than most of the lads. And, you know, I think that's just where <clears throat> the resilience comes from, right? When you, when you go through something over and over and over again, you become more accustomed to dealing with it. I'll give you an example. When, when we run ads, obviously you always get the guy on there, the trolls, the negative the, and all of that. And back in the day, um, I would say like three, four years ago, I used to read one and I would think about trying to look where they live and go and fucking confront them <laughs> <laughs> to, to that. And it used to bother me that much. If I saw a negative comment in the morning, it would affect my day mm. because I'd be thinking, is that, am I, am I actually a cunt or am I actually shit? Am I talking shit? Mm. And then I question myself. Whereas now it like it bounce off, it bounce bounces off me in, and I pity them more than anything and just a change of mentality and as you go through more and more experience of this mm. you'll get so sick of self-doubting at yourself you just go I'm just going to do it anyway yeah Be before I started the man coach oh it was back then it was just James Borman and a dad coach in that era 2015-16 and I started creeping online from my boot camp I didn't do any videos for six months because I was worried that people would judge me that was fit. I was feared rejection. I feared that I would say something that someone would disagree with. And th that was a until I just suddenly got in that first live. And then my first six months of doing morning lives, I had one or no people watching. So for, for you, Dom, I like, I believe in you. I, all the guys that came to that mastermind believed in you and Jane believes in you, and I really believe that you've just got to start doing it for yourself. Even if you start taking the plunge and taking the action and doing everything that you want to do, but you're, you're fighting the like anxiety alongside it, like that anxiety, what's that? Eventually, as soon as you start having breakthroughs, that anxiety is going to die. That self-doubt is just going to disappear and you're a level, and, 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 and you learn to overcome it. So um, if you if you... If you think about the conversation I had with Patrick, that elite operator mindset is like, boom, going into game mode, game mode. And between you and that conscious mind, which is your alter ego, um, it, it really, really develops conditioning of your brain, the patterns of your thought. Um, and although I still feel some morning, not every morning, like some mornings I'm like, I feel I'm not feeling this live or I'm not feeling this video or I'm not feeling this seminar. You, you overcome it and then you keep overcoming it because what's the alternative? Oh, well, that's exactly it. And I think, I think actually coming down to the, um, to the get together was, was pivotal really. It really yeah. made it because there was a couple of things. There was one that I wanted to turn around at Coventry and, and just head home and hide, you know, stick my head in the sand and overcoming that but then two was actually being you know part of that session part of that group of guys and also the fact that we just kept driving through it you know I know you didn't give us as big a beast in as we could have had but it still it was still something that I now think back on when I'm yeah. about to quit something or about to go yeah I can't do this and I think and actually that picture kind of some you know captured me in the in the moment and that kind of just comes to mind now so that made a big difference but i think yeah from what you're saying there james it is about just cracking on and 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 chipping away at it and i What's think the next step done well I've, I've been having a couple of interviews over this last um couple of weeks so i've yeah. got some some opportunities i've got one opportunity that is a through my business and a contracting opportunity and i've got one opportunity that would be me going back into a full-time employment role. So I've got some decision points coming up. Okay. The, the, the reason why I'm looking at that full-time role is because then the business that I've established, I could start to develop as a side hustle rather yes. than the pressure of 
you know, because basically I jumped out of corporate, set up my business within a month, built a really nice website and a great, you know, idea of what this looks like. And then I, I just, <laughs> excuse my language, shit myself for the last five, six months. I can't believe thinking, you're swearing, mate. <laughs> what, <laughs> thinking, what am I doing? And um, so yeah. the thing is with your, with your job, that like websites and all that are just fucking bollocks anyway because you don't like that that doesn't build a business it people doesn't it business. doesn't you you should be out there talking to people building networks liaising like doing joint projects and i think you're doing the right thing because it would take the pressure off you by getting yeah. a job and actually let's let's do this the right way let's say by the end of 2022 that you have some money coming in from your side hustle right Exactly. And I, I think that's it. I think it puts me back in a position of confidence. Control. So when I'm in a position of confidence and, and control, that's when I can really perform. Yeah. I think I'm just on the back foot. Yeah. I, I've lost a lot of confidence. I've got this huge self doubt and I'm not able to get traction in finding, you know, getting my wheels aligned and yeah. sort of get going. But I think if yeah. I can come from a position of confidence, I can nail it. Yeah, I know I can, but right now I'm just just spinning the wheels. Okay. And so great job on the self awareness front, Don. Like really good. Like um, and and I think we need to have this mindset that every time we feel self doubt, we break through. I want you to think of it as like this glass wall, bang. It like it's like a shutter, bang, comes down here and it's stopping you. I want you to get into the habit of switching on the mode, this mode, bang. I'm fucking breaking through it. Like it yeah. might feel uncomfortable. Do you know what you can relate it to? It's Coventry at that service station. Yeah. yeah. Like you either take your comfort blanket and you go back sucking your thumb and burying your head, or yeah. you keep on the journey. And that's every time you have self doubt, that is what you have to come back to the crawling, the sprinting, the hyperventilating, all of like all of those things would have moved you forwards in terms of that. So the minute you feel it, I want you to feel that resilience coming back and going, right, I'm smashing through this. Right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's what I want you well, to, to do for me. All right? Brilliant. Good man, Dom. Well done, bro. Thank you very much, James. Well done, brother. Cheers. Guys, this is going on a podcast. So anyone that's spoken to me so far, if you don't want it on, just message in the chat. Um, right, let's choose some of the people that have volunteered. Uh, let's miss out Jason. Jace, oh no, is he first? Yeah, I think you're first. Yep, go for it, Jace. How you doing, mate? You're right. Yeah, you. Yeah, not so bad, mate. Look at Recovering, the mate. What have you been doing? Oh, having run-ins with power tools, mate. <laughs> um, right, same question. Um, By the I way, you, Jace, you do actually. I know you've just woken up, but you you look you look healthy, mate. Cheers, mate. You've got some good colour oh. in your skin. I think, I think it's my uh, selfie light, mate. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Exposing your handsomeness. Uh, yeah, that's it, mate. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head for like the not respecting yourself enough. I think it's just kind of dropped for me because um, one of my biggest issues at the minute is keeping myself eating properly. I always end up reaching for the fucking biscuit tin and it's not just one biscuit, you know what I mean? It's like fucking half the packet and doing stupid shit like that and then always beat myself up over it. And um, I know I shouldn't be doing it. And like, I was having a conversation on the, the healthy eating with the guys last night. And I was like, why do I keep fucking doing it, you know? Um, but I think, like you say, it's down to having some respect for yourself, you know, because it's just blows holes in my, my objective. So... I'll be making more of an effort to rein that one in. And um, everything else has been pretty much okay. I mean, I'm aware when I'm slipping backwards, and like like a lot of the guys, the holidays and stuff, a lot of the routines have slipped because we have a lot going on. Like one of my lads come home with COVID and we had to make him isolate in my bedroom for the best part of 10 days. And we were all sleeping down in the living room, like shitting ourselves in case we got it. Fortunately, none of us did. Um, I lost a lot of time at work, so did my missus. So we got over that. Everything was getting back to kind of normal. And then I was going to stick a grinder on my leg the other day. So I'm holed up at the minute. 
Oh, mate. Um, right, so out of all of that, what's the number one thing stopping you from being where you want to be? Um, probably lack of self-worth, mate. And not realizing, not realizing that's the issue. Um, but now, like say, the penny's just kind of dropped. So I need to be, I need to be kinder to myself, mate. Okay, good. So how are we going to do that? Um, just like probably reflect more and take the positives from what I've achieved. Are you reviewing that? What's that? Are you reviewing your wins daily still? Are you recognising the things that you're doing well? Yeah, I am. Um, I've been keeping a journal and I do that every day in the review. But like the past couple of weeks, it's been a bit sketchy just with everything that's been going on. But I'm aware of that okay. and I am making more of an effort to get it done, Good. get consistent with it again. Let me show you something. So for a lot of you, um, I think a lot of you, I really want you to make sure you show up to meet see Jenna's workshop next week, um, which is Wednesday the 8th, I think it is. Um, I've been working with her for the last two months to build up my subconscious to be more secure, more confident. Yeah. And she is like phenomenal at what she does. And one of the things that we used to do before we started she used to grill me, was, um, I haven't got it on here, write down what was good. So she'd always say to me on the first session, what was good? So what was good this week? Um, and I would talk about these in the early days. I would talk about what was good and what's gone well in the week. And because I wasn't recording that, I was trying to think. But man, she grilled me for like 15, 20 minutes. She kept on saying, what else is good? I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. And I, it was pissing me off at first. But then I realized what she was doing. And what I kept on doing is recording every on my notes. You know, I don't know if you, I think I think everybody's kind of got this note app here. Yeah, enjoy the thing. So I kept um, so I kept a list of everything that I did well, everything I did well. So I didn't wait to the end of the day. If something was really good or I noticed something right away, um, it, it, it allowed I wrote it down. And she was talking about there's two different minds: the primitive mind and the intellect mind. And when you're in a primitive mind, you're very much tunnel vision. You're here. You remember, you've heard me talking about being short sighted right here. Yeah. And um, you don't really notice things. You don't really notice. You're just, you're just on, if you think about a rock falling down the hill, you're just like that, just continuously like yeah. tumbling. Um, when you're in your, when you're um, into intellectual mind, you notice things, silly things like, I sat there and watched the pigeon keep coming back down to steal all of our like weeds or flowers and stuff to make a nest. And whereas I've always been too busy to recognize like things in nature or things that are going on micro. So I was writing all of this shit down. And by the time I wrote down, like I had nearly 50 things in a week of things that were good for me. Oh, good. So I just go to notes, bang, stick that in there. And I'm yeah. just like, wow. And then I looked at it and when I read it out to her, I was like, wow, so many good things have happened. It's like um, when we've done that that little course with Pamela Langan, she talked about keeping a thing called a smile file on, okay. a, on a laptop. Exactly the same. I thought it was a brilliant idea, but yeah. again, I, I set it up and I've never done it, you know? And it's maybe something I need to start doing. I think so, and I think that's for everyone. It's not just you, mate. I think, yeah. like, I still do it now. Like, I think I, I, I've, I've had, that like four or five wins just this morning. Yeah. And, and it... You, when you start, your brain, your mind will follow the actions. And, and, and so your subconscious will follow your front conscious. So this is the leader. This, is, this will follow. So if this is saying negative, if this is saying you're not good enough, if this is saying... Yeah, it just compounds it and makes it worse. Yeah. yeah. So that, that then comes back down to having that respect for yourself because when yeah. you start thinking, when you start saying that's a good job like it doesn't have to be the same level as what it is for me or yeah. Dom or Patrick or Steve like it has to be just the best like so if I do something well recognize it not oh it's not as good as what someone else would do or it's not as fast as I could have done but more like boom smashed it so like yeah. I'm hoping to do my try tomorrow I will probably come in in the last 10 because I haven't trained but I don't care the thing for me is the win to actually get up and go and do it. So yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And and I think for you, Jace, when you start doing that more subconsciously, 
you're going to start feeling like, wow, yeah, I'm smashing this. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely yeah. something I need to prioritise more. So what I want to happen is for you to start, in, in fact, that's probably going to be a challenge that we're going to do for October. But um, I want you to start getting into that habit. Yeah. I want you to start getting in that habit. You can hold yourself accountable as well and do like Monday, Wednesday and Friday. You can post yours up. Bang. Just screenshot your notes and then stick it up in a group. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll put a post up by the end of the next week. Yeah. So do it next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Do it all of September and then it will be a habit. Yeah, man, definitely. All right. Good Cheers man. Good luck. Enjoy the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. No worries. <laughs> Swifty. Morning, James. How you doing? I'm all right. First of all, congratulations on like really taking action from the Mastermind Group. Thank you very much. I think you're like you doing every day, ain't you? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I missed um, last weekend, which I did feel a little bit bad about. But we had a busy week away on holiday. I've made the most of it. Um, I was going out for two miles on a solo walk. I was getting up at half five to then go for a walk with my mum as well afterwards. Because the whole family go. We, it's seaside holiday. Yeah. We have a number of chalets. So my sister, her, her sister-in-law, there's six kids. So all the cousins and that play against you know play amongst each other brilliant good for you man i'm really proud of you um same question what was the question <laughs> i've forgotten what's the number one thing holding you back from being your best oh yeah um the work at the moment because i don't really know what i want to do i feel yeah. i've listened to a couple of your things that uh, your videos the past the past week or so and it's about having passion and i'm not passionate about my work i'm how old are you, just, 50? sorry how old are you 48 okay so, so we've got another 20 years oh yeah i'd like to I'd like to retire 60 i think is the earliest but yeah i'll, I'll realistically 12 I'll to 15 years off, then because i've got young i've got young kids so okay. i'm gonna have to work a long time so I was, I was I didn't listen to the ladies Pam. Pam. Yeah, I didn't listen to her um session about working and I think that's what I need to okay. do. Um find out what I'm passionate about. I'm I'm good I'm good with people. Um, even though I say I don't like people. Um and I, I get difficult customers at work to deal with because I I turn them around, I get things Me done. Me too. Well, you know, and I don't get the easy one. I, yeah. I get handed the problem ones. And it's like, but isn't that a good test of your skill and everything that you learn? Well, yes, it is. But it, maybe I'm just not, I don't know whether I'm not pushing myself enough or I'm not realising quite what Are it is I'm doing. you in your job? Yes. And you want what? What do you want to feel? No idea, really. I, I always just think, oh, I want to see that like, I'm providing some value. But do you not think you are? Uh, yeah, or but not to me. That you've forgotten the, that you have. The business I am. Okay. And to the, to the customers, but not myself. Okay, that's fair enough. You know. Um, so I don't I know what I don't know what it is out there I could do that would be passionate, give me passion drive for work at the moment i'm developing everything outside of work yeah and especially now that we're i'm at home i work from home now all the time yeah it's making outside of work better than work so that i can feel joy in all of those other things and then work doesn't take such a high priority because it's just a bit dull yeah i get it i get it so i think it's definitely worth watching pam's video yeah um for sure I, I, I mean, I always talk about career jail quite a lot. Um, so the reason I asked you how old you was is just like obviously to determine how many years left you got working. I was kind of like, you know, 12 to 15 years is a long time to be stuck in a job that you feel unfulfilled in, right? And, yes. um, yeah. and I always wonder like, and there's always the danger, is the grass greener? Um, but you just don't know that. And I think it's not a case of just quitting the job and then deciding to go off. 
gallivanting around looking for something else. It's a case of building a career plan. And, you know, like Pam's a good friend of mine, so I kind of know a lot of the stuff that she talks about. Um, so it might be definitely worth watching that. And just uh, when we look for passion in a job or when whenever we look for ambition or a path, I always often talk about um, uh, testing stuff out, you know, um, like understanding the direction that we want to go. So it's almost dipping your toes in other things. Now, the only area like, like fitness, for example, trying different stuff, right, and seeing what you like and what you don't like. Now, it's really difficult to, to do that with a career because what you can't, you want some sustainability. I think it's really important to have that for, for employment and, um, uh, and career. But what you can do is there's nothing to, when was the last time you went around looking at other jobs and looking at what the job description was and then looking at those job descriptions and saying, I quite like the sounds of that. Very rarely. So it, it was probably quite a few months ago. Um, okay. I, I changed jobs eight years ago now. From, I worked for the NHS within finance and IT for 20 odd years. And again, that was just, I, I spent 10 years chasing girls out, out, outside of work. So work wasn't important. Yeah. And I got to my 30s and I was like, you know, better start settling down here. So still chase birds for quite a few years. Um, and then finally did that in my late 30s. So I was a late developer in terms of wife and that sort of thing. Awesome. So, <laughs> so work work wasn't important. Um, and it was very, very stressful, all that kind of stuff. Um, change jobs and thought actually what's all the fuss about it's easy to change jobs but is it easy to go to a job that you want to do now i'm finding i want to do something that i enjoy doing and i get value from and i'm passionate about well i think i think my i think the thing is number one to go and listen to pamela's yeah then maybe reach out to her as well and i think just start looking at other jobs and thinking like you know maybe it's something to do with helping people you know louisa that used to work with us yes she wanted more she went out and she now works with alzheimer's people with alzheimer's you know so she finds great um purpose in that role and that's you know, quite easy isn't it you just tell them the same thing again because they forget <laughs> Well, she she manages them all. Um, that's great, Swifty. Um, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> she manages them all. But uh, it's um, but I think for you, you've got to go. You've got to go and do a bit of soul searching. Yes, yeah, that's that's the only area that I struggle with is is the the business side, the work side. It's I don't know. I'd like to do something on my, you know, a business work yeah. for myself, something creative. But because I'm the uh, you know produce something because i'm the only breadwinner my wife yeah. has a couple of hours now yeah it, you know there's there's a lot of risk to keep yeah, the, of the house going and everything mm. else yeah so uh, a friend of mine makes uh scale models of boats and ships and things like that and and i used to help him about 20 years ago and i used to get great reward from doing that yeah but you're not gonna run, I, I couldn't run a house and support on family on that at the moment. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. 100%. So, um, yeah, go and have a chat. Go and, go and watch that video. Have Will a chat do. with the plan and then start, you know, having, just looking at a job in, just look at jobs. Like, look, look, like there'll be something in there in your mind that you think you'd love to do. Just go and have a look and start exploring. You know, there's nothing yeah. wrong in exploring and it, I think it might satisfy that, that, that fulfillment and purpose, mate. Yeah, because I only have to make a decision once I'm offered something. 100%. You know, at the end of the day, you're just testing the water, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You can get excited about looking, right? It's like shop window, window shopping. Exactly. All right, nice one, Swift. Hold on, mate. Thanks, mate. Hold on, Sin. Don't keep on. Um, right, Ben. Uh, not Ben Randall, just Ben. <clears throat> Morning. How's it going? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. Our phone seems to be really quiet. Hang on, I'm going to try it on headphones because I can't really hear you that well. Just a uh, Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, man. All right, okay, cool. Yeah, that's better. You look like Bear Grylls a bit there. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think. <laughs> right, same question. Uh, it's funny, actually, listening to other people. So, career, no. Uh, like, 
health wise, the one guy was saying about, you know, struggling with running, I, I'm like the healthiest I've ever been on that side of things. I'm doing um, the wolf run tomorrow, which is just a 10K. To be oh, fair. Compared to the, compared to the challenges you've set us, that's just a walk in the park, really. Um, and I uh, managed to get some decent sponsorship together for uh, the air ambulance in the Midlands. So, like, really chuffed with that. I'll do that tomorrow. It'd be, it'd be good fun, actually. So, um, it's more on the like the relationship side of things for me. I guess we all see our problems as a mountain, don't we? But you know, I think that the health one is probably the easiest because you can just quantify it quite well. Um, and you know, fortunately, I'm like physically not got any problems, so I guess that makes that easy. Um, work. I enjoy, I've got better at sort of not getting overwhelmed by it and controlling the amount of time it takes up and that sort of thing. I did used to get sucked in and do too many hours, but I've kind of um, not got that nailed, but I definitely improved a lot. Uh, well, it's yeah, relationships just, with yourself or other people? A bit of both, really. Uh, I'm separated from my wife. We're not divorced yet, but we've been separated for a couple of years. Need to... I've been thinking I need to kind of get on with the divorce, um, but I don't know. There's always reasons. We got, we got three daughters who have been, you know, been through a bit, and kind of there's always that finality to divorce, isn't there? Whereas at the moment we get on, me and my ex get on better than we ever, have. well, not what we ever have done, but we have done for years. Um, when you get back together, Ben? No, no, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. I give you some uh, advice just from experience, and just get the divorce done and move on. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be lingering. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, I think, um, you know, my uh, like my daughter struggled with delayed trauma with it, which is why we're we're doing stuff with her now to support. Oh, really? Her, oh. Um, from the split, but um, we the first two years were really spiteful, uh, and the relationship now is really, really strong, like really good. Mm. But um, the divorce for us from when we broke up was like four months, like just got it. Oh, right, okay. It was really quick. But the thing is, Ben, I think in this, like if it is over, if it's done, do you know what I mean? It's, I think um, you, you're kind of in a transition of chapters in your life. You're like, yeah, it's all massively. About. Do you know what I mean? So like, I think if it is finished and you're going to be um, amicable, which, which is fantastic, which is brilliant to, to hear, but you both, you know, eventually, it's, if, if you're not going to get back together, there's going to be other people on the scene. Yeah, that's that's been one of the friction points. Yeah, because I thought we were separated and we were right doing that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I, you know, she found out that I was seeing one of the school moms. I've had to move my kid to a different school because they had a massive fight, uh, and that was yeah, not I mean, not ideal. Um, but it just feels like. That that was that was about a year ago, and that was uh, a pretty bad time. To be fair, you know, she was getting real angry, saying she was going to fucking destroy me and all the rest of it. Um, and we got it took, probably took me about six months to get that back to sort of vaguely amicable, and then we're six months on now, and it just feels like it is procrastinating, but it just feels like we're on a relatively like even keel now. And if I've seen we, each other, pe other people. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? All right, John. Um, I thought I was Swifty trying to get back in. <laughs> she isn't, but I, yeah, I'm just, uh, and I've, I don't know, I've been flirting a bit, but I've just from that experience, little, I'm not very good at keeping on because you haven't divorced. Yeah, um, I just need to do it to be fair, uh, JB, but um, oh, I've got. Part of the reason I'm delaying the house that I live in, the, our family home, has got quite a big garden and I'm looking at getting planning consent on part of the garden because I'm going to get more money out. Obviously, I've got to split it, but if I can get more out, there's more to go around for the kids. That's taking time. So it just feels a little bit like, well, not a little bit, it, you know, I'm kind of treading, not treading water because it's progress, but it's slow and it's out of my hands to a degree. So, um that's the thing for me. Like, I'm all right. I'm, I'm cool with it. And I know yeah, like, of course. I get divorced. Um, it, it doesn't matter. What, what it doesn't. I, it, like, I remember crying when I, when a divorce come through. 
Yeah, and it's going to be sore. Sort of, yeah. Like I don't know why I'm crying, but like you know, this this is it was my choice to leave and stuff. And um, but it, it, it's final, right? And and final is hard. Doesn't matter what it is. Saying like that when that's f- signed signed off, it's final. It's finished. It's upsetting at the time, but I uh, the way that I looked at it was that that's the end. That's the that's that chapter finished with. Like that's that's it. And then that almost releases you from being chained to the wall and like yeah. now go and create your next chapter. Do you know what I mean? And and that it, it was it was all I take full responsibility for my for, for my failure of the marriage. It was a hundred percent me. And um but like you know I did get to the point where it was like time to move on. It was time to move mm-hmm. forward. Um you know I think you'd naturally been in the military and one things like 300 miles apart for so long catches up with you do you know what I mean but I think like for you Ben like I've seen you do so well since you've been in the mastermind I've seen you really grow and like seeing you talking about it now like you know it doesn't matter whether you're together or not it's still upsetting and it is still very hard to take and very hard to deal with and it's a really big decision where I think that we tap into the courage and we tap into um the operator mind that we talk mm. about, right? And it's just like, this needs to happen. Like, you know, if, if it does, you know, yeah, it like, does. Yeah, if, yeah, it does. If, if it needs to happen, uh... it's finished. If the relationship in a romantic way is finished, it doesn't mean that you can't become great friends and great parents together. Yeah, I think uh, I need to focus more on the long term rather than the short term. Short term, it's easy to just keep putting it off, kicking it down the road and coming up with excuses. What's happening uh, next? Sorry? What's the next move? What is the next move? Set myself a timetable, because as I say, I've got to do this planning thing with the land. Then uh, Approach we've, not, we've, not, we've not actually written down what we're going to have, what we're going to do in terms of, you know, I've seen a solicitor and they've just said, draw a line, put 50-50 down everything. But um, I, I own most of a business which not all of a business so that's a bit of a fucking mess so i could do without that being touched really but we'd have to do that by i think what you have agreement. to do here the way the way that you communicate this with your partner or your ex-partner um is like like handle it well communicate well just say look i think you think it's time to like nail this on the head let's should we get this confirmed let's work out who's having what and i think just, People, men go about it completely the wrong way and very emotional in, in that respect. Go about it in a logical process that makes sense for both of you. Do you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like, you, you without treading on minds, basically. So, I think create in your head the plan that you have and then approach it and just say, look, can we go for a coffee? Bang. And, you know, discuss. Like, yeah, I, I, don't don't be emotional about it. Don't let the ego get carried away. Be very calm, collective, legit, uh, logical. This, like, this is going to happen, um, and boom, like, mate, see what happens. Because I think you need—that's the next step for you, Ben. You've got to let go of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, still, it's, still it's, it's like it's like an anchor, life, mate. Right? It's like an anchor hanging off me. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. Yeah, you're chained to the wall still, like not literally, but like you, you're kind of restricted. You, you want to move on. You want that free mind space. As soon as it's done, it's like dropping the bergen. Like done. Next chapter. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll have to come up with a new problem, won't I? Because I well, feel 100%. like other, other than that, I'm, everything's pretty good. To be Yourself fair. on Tinder, so. mate. Tinder profile. Jason Laird will help you that. Oh, mate, there's some fucking nutters out there. No, I'll keep that a miss. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. In fact, where, where do you live in the country? Uh, in the Midlands, near uh, near Birmingham. Yeah. My best mate, Kirsty. I don't know if you ever see her on my stories or vlogs. She's like, James, you work with hundreds of men hook me up. I've been single now for like two years. I'm like, I don't know anyone. I was thinking, Ben's Ben's a good looking boy. Oh, she is, James. Yeah, what's she, what's she like? She's like she's beautiful. <laughs> but obviously she's my best mate, Ben. So I, I don't want to take her over. He's yeah, definitely getting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, be a, um, I'll be a good boy. All right, Ben, good chat. Lots to do there. Emotional, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just that um, oh, it's stop hard. stop being a pussy and putting it off. Yeah, it's, it's hard. You, you're not being a pussy. It's difficult. It's hard. It's a, it's it's the end of a chapter. It's saying it's it, it's it's recognizing it's the end. 
it's readjusting it in my head that it's not the biggest failure of my life. It's actually just a, you know the way it's worked out, and I just need to draw a line. Yeah, it's an experience, bro, and like your next relationship will be much stronger for it. Yeah, cool. Other than that, though, you know the structure you put in, mate. It's it's all good. Yeah, good luck. Keep it up. Keep it going. Thank you. Well done. Good Cheers. Luck. Good chat. Okay, um, let's fire through these. Uh, Steve Hallam. Hey, JB. How are you? Hey, man. How's it going? Let me just put your lower hand down there. Cool. Same question, dude. For me, it's focused um, because I always want to do it all. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's work or if it's the gym or if it's family or anything else. And because I know I can't, I end up feeling a bit like I'm, I'm an imposter, what I'm doing. Um, and that leads to kind of a, a load of doubt. And I, I, I noticed this uh, a little while ago. I've been sort of trying to do little things to, to make my life, A, first of all, a little bit more efficient. So I can do a few more things, but also try and focus on the things that are important, like time with the, time with the family, you know, the things that are really important in terms of the, the work and, and what's going on there uh, and, you know, and the other parts of my life. Uh, it's been it's been it's been a bit of a journey actually over the last like, over the last couple of months. I don't know if you, you might have seen my post about the fact that it's sort of been existing a little bit, like having finally put down a load of the baggage from my dad, um, and now it's just kind of just dry. It's now just trying to get myself refocused to, to the like the end of the year really. Um, so it's been it's, it's that's been kind of where I am, and, and it's that that focus has been the kind of the big big challenge for me. Um, but I am making progress in, in all of these things as well um like the, the work thing for example i i i realized that i'm never going to achieve what the the, the expect the, the unrealistic expectations of what's being asked of me at work um and in fact realized that the the way that's being set up is actually is very toxic so i'm actually very close hopefully to get being offered a job uh, in another organization um which is a, a big deal for me because that's a, mm-hmm. there's a there's a mass, massive emotional tie to, to where i am currently um and that I, that will change things massively in my life. There'll be a lot less pressure uh, on you know the, on the household in, in in some things, which actually means that um, Louise won't potentially need to go and work so much. So there's obviously more time for us to just generally uh, becomes more of an option for her. Um, but also means that I won't I won't be so uh, in the trenches as it were because the job as well is is actually is the promotion that I should have had four months ago when I threatened to leave last time. Um, offered everything i've offered everything in the world to stay and it was a great big start um and then realized you know two you know two months down the line that nothing had changed so uh, a relationship isn't it that where somebody's promising to change over and over again and you never do yeah yeah (laughs) it's funny that that was that was the realization i came to it was it um so what someone actually said to me is that is it any different to your relationship with your ex-wife i was like not really (laughs) oh yeah i love it Okay. So, so, so the the, uh, the reaction was, what did you do? What did you do there? I thought, well, I, I changed. Good. Evolve. We just evolve, don't we? And I think, um, yeah. Just, since I've known you, I think the job has always been the issue. Like always been the issue, and, and the stress to keep up those unrealistic corporate footsie type rec- like expectations that they want your soul, man, and. Um, I think when you realise that you don't want to give it, and like you, and it belongs to family, it you naturally are forced into making a change, right? So let's let's uh, let's hope that this new job brings you much more grounding and value and fo- and and more headspace to be able to like focus right on on the things that are important, you know, like the family life, and 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 I I know that that's the that means the most to you more than anything, so. I think you know you're setting yourself up for like a positive couple of years ahead of you if you, you can get this job and even if you don't get this job then kind of like what's the plan how do we get out of this still like because i think the most important thing is that you've decided it is time to move on and you know just like we were talking with ben there right like once that decision's made half of the decision half of the problem is decision fatigue like cons like the bullshit that goes around in our brains of Oh, should I, shouldn't I, should I? And you just get sick of it, right? And you just, in the end, bollocks, I'm just going to make a decision and go, or go. You can only learn and deal with the consequences of that decision and then evolve from it and then learn and grow from it. So otherwise, 
we never move forwards. Yeah, totally. It's, sometimes you've got to make that plunge, I think, to be able to, yeah. to, 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 to drive forward. And it's scary as hell when, like, this, this new role, it's, it's, a, it's a step up, but, it's, but because it's a step up, I don't have to do so much. Grinding. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's fingers crossed um, with, with that. I've got the final interview on Monday, so. Um, good for you, good for you, good for you. Um, listen, let me know how that goes. Drop me a message. Will do. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll get it. I can't imagine you're not. Um, right. Uh, ben Randall, come on down. All right, mate. How's it going? Yeah, good, man. Good. Let me just get rid of this. Done. What's happening? Uh, it's a bit weird, really, because things going well have created the issue. <laughs> my god <laughs> because of i think the thing is with me i mean the, the morning routine's been affected by a knock on effect of poor sleep at the moment um so i feel like i'm getting less done in the mornings that i want to get done so i feel like i'm missing out on things i suppose that i should be so pd's taking a hit again this month um but yeah, I think coping with the changes at work that have come from, I think I mentioned, well, I mentioned in one of my posts, posts that of sort of, this is a second sort of promotion I've had in work and my workload has gone through the roof in a good way. It's what I was aiming for anyway, because yeah. in my 10 year plan, it was about sort of making directorship at some point in the company I work for. I've worked there since 2009 and worked my balls off all the way from the bottom to the top now virtually. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of coming to fruition in a lot of ways. Um, I'm now sort of moving into senior management and I knew I was getting a department to run, but it's turned into, it looks like I'm taking over two departments and they're amalgamating the two together, uh, yeah. which is good for me. It's good for the career in that sense. But yeah, just not overwhelm, but I think just getting used to the tidal wave of, wave of work that's just suddenly arrived at my feet. And then we've put an offering on a house and applying for mortgages. Yes. Um, my yes. partner's expecting again. <laughs> it's just all at once. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> Cheers, man. Um, amazing. So good. It is all going well. Yeah. So obviously, do you remember? I don't know if you've ever seen me talking about it. And um, it's like the steps of um, of evolving. And like when we, like you're, what, a good eight? probably a good like just creeping into a nine out of ten overall would probably say definitely you're in there yeah and i always say that like we never score ourselves a 10 because when we score a 10 we become complacent we've reached our peak we never want to peak which sounds crazy right we're always chasing the peak so in theory what's happened now is that your habitat your environment has just completely changed and with that habitat and environment comes new dangers of overwhelmed like just talking to steve exactly about these same things right unrealistic expectations now you've just got a promotion more money which is great but they want a little bit more of you yeah um and um you now have external pressures of house baby coming as well and you know i I put my hands up and say the last 12 weeks have been like like really mental like for me i did like i thought i was going to be in control of it all but struggled a bit mentally and emotionally with it all at once so what we have to do with you is make sure that we are as well prepared as possible so that means like you say nailing that morning routine a little bit more so connecting more with the triage of the health pillar mental and emotional especially and having a physical output of the stress like to, to clear the mind to get the brain flowing through the brain the blood flowing through the brain and um really setting yourself up so that you become the operator right so you're you're ready to deal with the things that are coming in yeah i guess there's an, an element of learning on the job as well you're going to fail an awful lot yes like, yeah that yeah. disrespectfully i just mean you just naturally you're not going to be put in situations you haven't been put in before right so yeah embrace that don't allow that to then suddenly make you feel like crap about yourself Go, that's a learning point that's an experience and that's what I'm talking about, the resilience here, the strength of you. Of you. So you, you are probably going to go from an eight or nine. I, I reckon in the next three months, you're probably a six or seven. Yeah. And that's just because 
you're, you're being freshly challenged, which is great, right? It's what we want in life. This, this, this is an exciting time for you. Yeah. Um, but also you have to raise your game. Yes. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. I think that's what I'm aware of as well, I suppose. So I know yeah, that fine. it's just sort of getting your head around it. I think that's the bit at the moment is just roll with the punches for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, but, but accept that. Yeah. Like, accept it. Accept there's going to be a bad day here or there. Accept there's going to be a little bit of stress here and there, but don't let it consume you. Yeah. Process, yeah. throw away. Process, throw away. You know, and I think that's what's really important. And I think using the mastermind to be vocal about that, like reaching out to all of us, like if you need help, me, if you need guidance as well, um, you know, my door's always open, but I think let's see what happens, man. You might, yeah, you might yeah. absolutely crush it. Yeah, hopefully. We well, will, I have no doubt. <laughs> and if you don't crush it the first time, you'll crush it the second time because you'll learn. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If, you've, if you, you haven't got to this far by fluke, you got to this far by adapting, learning, overcoming, learn, grow, yep. repeat, learn, grow, repeat. Right. So, yeah, I, yeah. All right for you, Ben. Yeah. When, cheers, when's man. When, when's your missus due? Um, it's madly enough. Um, it's the date looks like the thirtieth of March, so it's early days at the moment in terms of everything. But yeah. Um, so yeah, day before my birthday. Wow, it's a month <laughs> for your missus, anyway. Yeah, amazing, mate. Oh, that's good news. All right, uh, send yeah, cheers, congratulations to us and um, good luck with the promo. And then reach out, obviously, if you need to with it all. Yeah, we'll do. Nice one. Good well done, dude. Good cheers, man. mate. Good man. Good to see people getting all of that. Um, Andrew. Good morning. How you doing? Very well, yourself? Good. <clears throat> Same question, Andrew. Um, just, just a lot of what the other guys have said. Um, real lack of self-doubt, negative self-talk, and I think a lack of direction and what I actually want, you know, to kind of do. You know this kind of drifting warrior you've you know you've kind of mentioned previously yeah what are you going to do about it <clears throat> i need to sit down because i know you get quite a few um courses uh you know coming up i mean i've i've tried to i've written down uh, about the you know the kind of 10 year plan etc and uh, i think a lot to do with who was, I think it was the first guy that was on, you know, getting confused, you know, between, uh, you know, the, the mission and the, you know, the kind of vision. I think that kind of consumes me, you know, you know, kind of too as well. What, between the mission and the vision? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've written things down, like in the next, you know, next 10 years, you know, what I kind of... Let's worry about what we need to achieve the next month. So tell me what uh, the priority is for the next month. Well, we're actually getting, made some big progress in the house front. We're uh, ripping out the kitchen okay. on... What about you, though? You personally? Well, that actually kind of lifts a lot of... Bizarrely, that kind of will make the house and relationships, you know, within the house better because... Get a nice kind of new kitchen. Um, me personally, I've been. You know, the schools were off. Well, you're a right fidget, Scott. Andrew. Sit down. Pardon? You're a right fidget. <laughs> you're making me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to multitask here. Because... I know. Don't do it because you're going. You're making me like I feel like I'm in a flight simulator or something. <laughs> I, I, I'm. I'm not just a one-trick pony here. You know. <laughs> All right. So the this, missus, the, so sorry. So the missus is working today. So the kids are downstairs, and the in-laws are coming up later to because we've got some DIY work to do later. So I've just try. I've been trying to get organised whilst waiting, uh, you know, to get on the call. So 
I'll sit down now. So I, I just for a minute because it honestly, like, vertigo <laughs> going, my vertigo is going. Right. So Andrew, this is a cut. Like we we had this like month. Obviously, we didn't do it in August because I what did I have on? I had something on. Um, oh, we had the mastermind meet. God, that was four weeks ago already. Um, and this is a common problem for you, I think, that we're having, right? And I, I want you to forget the long-term vision right now. Okay. Like, I just want, because, like, I think you're focusing too much on that, and we're not focusing on the present right now. So I don't think you're in a position to be thinking about that that long, that far, that far ahead. I think yeah, what, 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 what I want you to focus on is where do you want to be at the end of the year? Okay, you don't have to answer that now because you can't. Mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. you to go away and I want you to spend the next four or five days contemplating on what you would like to achieve in the pillar pillars over the next four months or three and a half months. Okay, leading up to Christmas. Like, where would you like to be um, physically? You know, where would you like to be mentally? Where would you like to be emotionally? What does that look like? Almost use some visualization. So you're almost like you close your eyes, you visualize what it looks like, you visualize what your body looks like, you visualize the the the, the conversations that you're having with yourself, you visualize like the emotions and how you're handling your emotions. You you, you look at how well you're being organized in your career, at home, with your relationship, with your children, and kind of visualize just on that and just go all in on that. Stop worrying about the long term, the long term. Okay, just focus on on that. Yeah, that that that's that's very true because it's been a bit of like an emotional journey because uh, um, my dad and me went in for a pacemaker. He he's now eighty one, and my mum's pretty much, you know, kind of housebound, you know, because yeah. of her. She needs a hip replacement, and you know she's going in and uh, Thursday. And I've, you know, I've not been able to go down and spend so much time with them, you know, you know, with the kids. I've been kind of around at the, you know, the kind of in-laws. So, yeah. kind of emotionally, you know, you know, it kind of starts playing in my mind because of the aging parents, you know, et cetera. And I don't like to see my mum in, you know, so much kind of pain. And yeah. when that kind of ties in with the vision of 10 years, it starts, you know, oh, cranky yeah. in 10 years' time, you know, it could be in a, you know, a situation where, my parents are, are are no longer going to be, you know, around and yeah, you know because, I mean, I live, I live like 40, 40 minutes away from them, and because my mom and dad are kind of pretty kind of housebound, they start thinking should I, should we move, you know, this that the next thing, so you know the brain's been kind of consumed with all these kind of, uh, you know, kind of thoughts going through, so this kind of maybe just focusing in. One thing I noticed in the way you're talking, dude, is you're talking about everybody else but yourself. Yeah, no, no, that's interesting too. Sorry, two wee seconds because my daughter's that's in right. here. Don't worry. <clears throat> uh, like, I, I, I definitely reckon you're prioritising everyone else but you. Yeah, and I'm I, I'm kind of aware of this, you know, and it kind of jumps back to well, if you don't look after yourself, then you can't look after uh, anybody else, you know. So what are we going to do from here? <sighs> Just to kind of reset, and you know, whilst there's all these other things, you know, kind of going on in my, you know, the kind of background, and there's you know, kind of a lot consuming, you know, my thought process. I need to. I need, I need to kind of focus, uh, you know, on myself. I mean, one of the things I've actually done now that the all the kids are now at school, um, I've been actually going to the, I've kind of rejigged my kind of weekly plan because I used to put my gym sessions down in the evening. You'd be usually by that time I was cream, I was, I was too tired, you know, to go. So I've been actually going in, in my lunch break, you know, and it Good kind enough. of breaks... Because it kind of, it kind of breaks up the day, you know. Because I'm, you know, kind of working from home, so it gets me out, um, running the treadmill for twenty minutes, which is not great. But then I think to myself, well, twenty minutes is better you've than beating no yourself minutes. up again. You've just beaten yourself. It's not great, but it's still doing it. Like you've missed the whole point of the win. 
that you're going to the gym and you've changed your routine. Like you're I, like, I, no, 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 no. I, you, know, you know, you're absolutely, you know, that's the way my mind wires. All right. Doing this rather than what you've just, how you've just described, you know, the situation, you know, I kind of forget that. And, you know, doing the routines and, you know, the kind of morning routines kind of. You can wank yourself off for 20 minutes and it's still an arm workout. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like, honestly, you've, you've like a workout is a workout and it really is just literally about like recognize, like this is the, this is where it's fucking going wrong for everyone here because everyone's looking for the big fucking gold plate win. And yeah. a lot of you are missing the micro fucking wins that you get like showing up to the gym at lunchtime, Andrew, for you, like I've been working with you for what a year and a half, and like that's mm-hmm. huge. So you go like fucking the wins here, not like not the, not the fact that it was just a run, and the fact that like everyone else is fucking grinding themselves. So you need to do what I was talking about earlier: is start writing down your wins on here. I think it was and Jason was talking to every little win that you have, just fucking put them in here, boom, 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 one after the other. But then it's nice of you to kind of say that, but I. Do you, do you kind of mean that? Well, obviously you do, because you wouldn't have said it. But... <laughs> <Are> you serious? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, to, to turn around and say, or oh, going to the gym at lunch times is a big thing, but... Well, it is. Know, it's, just, it's just going to the gym at Do you know how many men <laughs> tell me they're going to go to the gym at lunchtime and never do it? Seriously? It's fucking... Because, like, most men are full of shit with their excuses. They all say they're going to do it, but they uh-huh. never show up to do it, mate. Uh-huh. The fact that you are showing up and doing what you said you were going to do is a win. Like for the first year you worked with me, you were just full of shit. Like all the stuff you were telling me, you were just telling me because that's what I wanted to hear. And and then we got, and then we overcome that. And now you started showing up and, you, you know, not as much as I would like you to, but you're starting to rewire the process. You've nailed work. I haven't heard you t- t- uh, talk negatively about work in three or four months. That's sound. Yeah. You've built your relationships. The only thing that is holding you back, so the, this long answer to that one question is simply you don't, um, uh, you don't value yourself. And, and you don't value yourself because you're not connecting with your internal voice and conversation. You're not writing down the wins. You're not recognizing the success. You're not understanding how far you've come. One of the biggest things I do, one of the biggest things I have to do every single morning routine is think back on the last six years of growth that I've had. And I think about all of the hardships that each one of those years, and I can remember every single point of there being some hardship financially or spiritually or mentally, and think, look how far you've come. Look at where you were last year. Look at where you were last year. Look at where you were two years ago. Yeah. And you need to, as part of your morning routine, reconnect with the progress that you're not, not what you're not doing, because that's negative. You're focusing on that. Is what you are doing. Focus more. What would you suggest? What, what would you suggest? What do, What do I do then? You know, fucking talk to yourself about the things that you're progress- like. Reckon only think about the things you are doing, and not worry about the things that you're not doing. Ah, uh, you no, know, no. Because if I think the journey I've had, you know, with yourself, okay, there's been a lot of kind of headwinds, you know, blah blah blah. But then. If I think about the wins, I whilst I'm not the finished article, I think I've... You'll never made... be the finished article because that's uh-huh. the whole point of this journey. You're chasing your peak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the thing with work is too as well, you know, buying a pound fifty diary out of uh, Tesco's and mapping out the day. You know, I remember, you know, my boss asked me, Andrew, what are you doing today? I just went bang, 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 bang. And then he responds like, whoa, that's concise. And it was like, well, you asked me what I'm doing today, you know. There you go. There's I, another I, win. There's another thing you haven't recognised. Uh, no, absolutely. You know, it's a case of... He we're wrestling. What... When I come to Scotland, Andrew, we're going to fucking wrestle. Are you? Yeah. No, when I do, I will be coming to Scotland next year. But you and me, we're going to fucking, we're going to wrestle because you drive me mad. Well, mud wrestling or just... No, proper wrestling. wrestling on the mat. We're fucking jujitsu in it. That's full on in. Oh, that, that, that's a bit unfair because... I tell you what you should do. You should bring your golf clubs because there are some fantastic um, courses up here. I will be. Trust me. I'll, I'll be coming up. But listen, um, I'm going to move on to some others. But Andrew, just recognise your absolute success because mm-hmm. you are such a great guy and you are doing so well. I just want you to see that. 
Yeah, and I think this course, I think one of the things maybe is the mental, the mental strength, and you know all this kind of negative self talk because it's it's interesting that every single person on this course probably does it, you know, does it, and and your good self, yeah. um, you know, does it as well. So it would be quite kind of, I think it'll be interesting to hear um, what she kind of has to. As to say, she probably better not speak to me, or else she probably would want to throw she'd herself. She'd be able to get off the phone. She'd be like, "Oh, there are a lot of people here, Andrew." She'd be like, "This God, I'm not going up to Scotland if that's what they're like up here." <laughs> <laughs> Mate, good job, well done. Okay, thanks for your time. I'll catch up with you, good lad. Okay, cheers. <laughs> um, Craig, where are you? Me, there he is. Me, <laughs> fucking voiceover. Right. <laughs> oh dear! Look at that dressing gown, huh? Meant, isn't it? Hey, look at the chest out. Fuck it out. I'm sweating my ass off here. I'm thinking, fucking, hell, I need to get this dressing gown off. <laughs> Don't do it while we're on here, mate. God Almighty! Right, same question. Did you did you hear the question? Yeah, yeah, many times. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Um. Well, I'm going to flip it on its head because I'm going to probably make people cringe and be like, oh, this is the best thing in the world ever that's happened to me. Um, look how great I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I've got Get it to out there, it Craig. There Get it out there. And be like, you know, I'm four months in now since the 28th day. Yeah? Um, and, yeah, what can I say? It's, uh, it's all taking place. It's all dropping in. My self awareness is um, as good as it's been probably for twenty years. <laughs> um, you know, health's good, training, loving it. Um, what you know, I, I don't know what it's like. It's like, yeah, this this process is is brilliant. Good for Absolutely you, man. brilliant. You seem completely um, different, even from just seeing you. You seem really confident. I think that's the first thing I noticed. Like there, when we was talking there. Because you were definitely um, slightly nervous when you come down, or anxious when you come down. But like seeing you there, you look really healthy. You look really cut. You look fresh. Fresh. Yeah, as I feel it. Head. I feel it. Yeah. You know, it's been a few months now knocking the, the old cannabis on the head, and um, by default, that has meant that I've I've got no desire for drinking. You know, fifteen beers a night, and um, everything's good. I, you know, I've I've got issues. Don't get me wrong. You know, but. Again, it's coming down to that level of self-awareness that's just peaked, and I've got a way to go. Don't get me wrong; I'm not saying this is the end, the end product. But you know, um, I've observed this week where I've been a bit ratty at home, a bit, a bit pissed off with certain things. But it's having that awareness where I go, "Well, yeah, I'm probably entitled to feel like this, and how am I going to get round it, and what we're going to do to to sort of rectify things so that we can move forward positively." Yeah. Um, and, and that again comes down to that building of self-awareness where you just go right you've got to ride this out and you know crack on I um, love it the the work side of things you know listening to people as well about you know career career dilemmas and um, you know ambition and you know I listen and I, and, I, and I watch and I think about myself and where I've been in my life in the past where I've always had this entrepreneurial streak and I always had this wild kind of, um, what would you say, desire to, to do as many different things as I could. And I, and I think I've reached that point in my life where I had a business failure, if you like. Um, I'll not draw over it, but, you know, I had a, I had a bad financial year. Things went really wrong. Um, and I've settled into a, a job by default that, I never aspired to do, and I'm thinking, well, does it matter? You know, if I've got if I've got 10, 15, 20 years left working, doing a fairly mundane job that brings me, you know, quite decent money, is that not the offset balanced, you know, like the trade-off to having a great work out of life? Can okay. we have can we have that life of fucking overjoyed 
you know, going to work, skipping and singing every day. Who gets that? Disneyland. Disneyland. Like, it's, it's, it, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think there is some level of like, like I, I don't actually talk a lot about being in the nine to five. Let's just say the nine to five. So like what you do in nine to five, you just got to get done, right? So sometimes there are things that we do just have to go in and get done. And I think there are the people that are like what you've just said, are happy before work are happy after work, they live a great life, they've got lots of people they love, they're nice house, but actually what they do between nine and five, they just do it. It's just like automated mode. And there are lots of obviously different thoughts, some like Swifty, Swifty wants more out of his job. And so they pursue that, but there is nothing wrong with just saying, man, this job pays me 50 grand a year. You know, it, I'm happy in it, it's comfortable for me. And when I finish work, I finish work. I leave work at work and I just enjoy the rest of my life out of work. So, mate, million percent. And I think that's just what makes us all very different, isn't it? How, yeah. how we are. You know, I, I think to my, and this is the one, and it's interesting you say that. So this is the one thing that I have to manage with myself, with my expectations, is that, like, I'm happy with where everything is right now. I could probably do an extra four hours a day, every single day, and make it into something much bigger. But yeah, I, just, said, yeah. I don't want to like I like because I'm I've got a ten a ten week year old that I want to spend time with a four year old I want to help my kids get through college and stuff like that and I just think to myself now is not the right time so you're absolutely right with that point and it's a really great point mate yeah, yeah. and it's a personal point for me just recognizing what Ben just said then why can't we have it all it's like yeah if you can great yeah. but I feel like I spent twenty twenty five years trying to find it yeah man and don't really feel like I personally have ever found it. And really when I look at it, I've, I've always admired those, those people who are happy and steady in their job, you know, yeah. content and kind of thought, why can't I be like that? Why can't I be like that? And what, what I think's happened through this process is that again, that level of awareness, that self auditing, that evaluating, that reviewing, has made me recognize what I want out of life. And what I want out of life is optimum out of work life. Yeah, like it. Yeah. So if I've got, I, I, I'm working class, I'm always going to be working class. You know, I've got friends who are, you know, into the millionaire streak, and I've got friends who are on their ass worse off than I am. So I'm always going to be working class. That's my self awareness now. You know, I'm, I'm going to be working the rest of my life you know yeah. up, until I, up until i can't work anymore yeah uh, and so i need to get my fucking head around that and that's what i've done i think i've got my head around it and good for you you know let's enjoy the out of work time you know and, and that's that's good for me now so great level of awareness mate great level of like yeah feel it like, feel it really really good really really good and i like I actually think you have the potential to do something like what we're doing here, like with other people, like definitely, like, you know, in terms of yeah, that, like, that. I think down the line, it'd be a good, good thing to, I've got a lot to give, don't get me yeah. wrong, but I, I would class you as like really emotionally intelligent. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you are very savvy and aware of your own emotions, but other people's as well, which is a, which is a really unique skill to have. Sure. Yeah, and obviously I hold a lot of that skill through being, you know, with my acupuncture clinics and, and being a therapist for for best part of a decade, you know, yeah. that, that level of emotional intelligence had to grow. Yeah, of course. Something that's always been recognised from me being young, you know, is that I do have that awareness of other people, how other people think, yeah. what they're feeling. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I dare say that in the future, I'd like to give something back again you know, in, in that respect. But yeah. right now, I'm just happy dragging that money in Monday to Friday. I've, I've actually got a new job role, which I've mentioned a couple of times on, on the forum, but um, I've got the option to work Monday to Thursday if I want. Yeah. And I'm still earning more money than I was two weeks ago. So yeah, happy days, you know, really? let's have some of that for a bit. <laughs> I, need really? holiday, though. I think we all need a holiday, as in my family, you know, my wife, my son, us, we, we need a holiday, man. It's, yeah. I'm the same. We're the same. Like we're hundred percent the same. Like I think you just need, and I, what I mean by holiday is not going to Peppa Pig world or weddings. It's like <laughs> literally fucking sitting by a pool and doing nothing. Cause 
I came back more stressed than ever after those four yeah. days. Um, but like, yeah, I think everybody does, you know, and um, yeah, mate, this is really good chat. And I think a lot of the lads, we get a lot from it as well. hundred percent, Craig. So really proud of your, like your change, dude. Um, like, cause I know when you first come on, it was like a risk for you to kind of like, like come and do it and take the plunge and get involved. And I remember the second workshop of your 28 day you come on hungover i think and yeah i did i thought about that this morning i was yeah. like up fresh with my little boy this morning yeah. i was thinking fucking yeah. hell that second one i went on i was i i think i said i parted a bit hard last night yeah and you did yeah yeah you had a mate come around right. or something and um and i i look i think of that and then i think of the you now and i think wow four months look at that progress amazing yeah. good for yeah. you and i'd like i'd like you to be able to take that for your self-limiting beliefs and your self-doubts and, and and flip that and go, well, yeah. look at Craig, what a fucking bum he was. Now look yeah. at him, you know. Smashing um, it, smashing it. In his dressing uh, gown like the Lord of the Manor. Still the same I'm... dressing gown as well. <laughs> it's just a little looser. <laughs> yeah, Mate, yeah. <laughs> Mate, Craig, thanks for coming on, bro. Well done, man. Good All man. Right, man. See you later, Good man. Yeah. Love it, love Cheers, it. Guys. Cool. Um, Andy? This right. Andy. We, we get these three lads. So you're Andy, Rob, John, and Victor. Where are you, Andy? How are you, mate? How's it Go going, bro? Um, yeah, yeah, good. Um, generally, generally good. Um, What's the one thing holding you back? Um, physical. Um, but, again, I'm going to flip that because there's not a lot I can do about that. Um my knee is just deteriorating, so I'm trying to get some treatment for that. The big thing, and this is where I'm going to flip it, is um, I'm having my annual cancer scare at the moment. So I had cancer 10 years, 11 years, no, 10 years ago now, and uh, obviously recovered from that. And every single year, there's been something crop up. Um, this time, um, I was a bit sad when I came out. I mean, I had the ridiculous amount of blood taken again. Um, but yeah, I... I've put myself and me, me, me resilience is much stronger. Um, do you have so, to have that like that if once a year then do your blood's taken? No, no, no. I, I I don't have to no, I have to have regular blood tests, but not for that. It's cancer related, but it's not for trying to diagnose or take markers and stuff. Um this is because um the what's happened is the knee has gone to the hip. The hip has been giving me some real jib, so I just assumed they were linked. Went to the doctor, the doctor started rummaging around in the hip primarily, and there's been a lump come up on my neck as well. Um, and because of the chemo I've had in the past, it, it, uh, it makes me more prone to certain bloodborne cancers. So, then, so any lumps and lymphs and things are a bit concerning. But he had a really good rummage around in the hip, um, and then he asked me for bloods the next day. And I, honestly, I've not had as many bloods taken for, since I was actually in hospital as I did that day. So four vials went on. So he's, he's testing all the range of markers and stuff. But the important bit isn't the fact that I'm having that stuff done because, I mean, I've had the, the, the other scare I've had since I've been um, in your process, which is just over a year now, um, was obviously I've got a cyst the size of a cricket ball on my right kidney. That was, the, that was another one that we've had in this time. Um, but that's benign. Um, so, yeah, it, the, the important bit is the fact that I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good. As opposed to being falling apart, I've had my moments where I'm a bit scared and I've had my moments where I'm a bit sad, particularly walking out of the doctors the other day and had the blood stone. Um, but I've just kind of cracked on. Um, when I, when I was ill... Have you had your results back for all of it yet? Sorry, mate? Have you had your results back? No. Um, it, it's, I'm, I'm anticipating clear because what else can I do? Um, it's, the, it's the fact that... It, it happens. It's like my missus said, you know, well, we're getting old now. I said, well, in fairness, <laughs> I've been having this for 10 years. I've been having this for 10 years, you know. This is like, it's literally annually. You're resilient to it. This is what we were talking at the start, right? About things that keep happening. You become yeah. more and more used to them happening. So you become more resilient to that, that initial fear you felt in year one to year 10 will be different. It, you, you're right. But also... Um, I, th I think I've grown a lot this year. That's the point. The point is, is I've changed the way I'm thinking about the world a lot. Yeah. Uh, over the last twelve months, and that's made me more 
looking on, you know, I'm doing so much gratitude work. I'm doing so much what other people call sort of woo-woo stuff. And I was thinking back to, was it, I can't remember someone who was talking about um, self-doubt and stuff. Dom, I think it was. Um, and if, if you, the things, the things that cause that type of emotion are memories of what you've done and experiences in the past. If that makes sense rather than looking at what you what life can be and living according to those rules rather than what's happened in the past yeah and that's where I'm, that's where i've been it's really really hard to do yeah uh, to, to stimulate fulfillment in your own body without any kind of external stimuli just through literally your your own internal thought patterns and the way your brain works and stuff like that do an awful lot of work and and research into that sort of stuff so rather than just fall apart and be and feeling sorry for myself and all that sort of stuff, you know, I've cracked on with the drawing. Um, I've re-engineered my entire ten-year plan recently because I realised that I'd gone off piste a bit and I wanted to get back. Um, so I'm I'm feeling far more focused and sensitive with that. Um, and the daily planning is the next issue because I don't because of the way my brain works, it doesn't work to plan a week in advance. So I have to plan daily. So I plan the next day, this evening, that's the next fine. day, this evening. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the only way I can do it. And I've got certain points that I want to hit each day. Good. You know, our block. So in fairness, the big win is is the mindset. And the thing that holds me, holding me back is the thing that's causing me to have to have a mindset. So yeah. Round robin. Like a round robin stuff, man. But it's good. Thanks for sharing it. And I think it's probably good for you as well to open up to it. So let me know about the results when they come through. Yeah, we'll do, mate. All right, good lad, Andy. Keep going. Um, what about um? Sorry, the last thing, surgery on your knee. Is that a possibility? Yeah. Um, it, it, if that if it comes down to that, I'll go private with that to get just get it done. Um, it, again, I did it kicking in karate. I, was, and I can't, so I can't do any of that at the moment. I did it in a kick, um, and it went, and I felt it pop, and I went when I put my foot down, I went over sideways, and I was wearing that bloody great strap when I come down to your gap. Yeah um and uh it's a possibility um it's just getting worse and worse but i'm i don't want to come off work because i've learned in the past you come away from work yeah my mental health goes down because it's a pattern for me it's doing that but on the opposite of that if you don't get your knee sorted you won't be able to stand to work yeah it's 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 a it's a fine balance <laughs> you know it's a fine balance okay. uh, right. well can be posted anyway with the results for the bloods and stuff like that and just like obviously your I, I feel that your mindset's like uh strong. So just keep it there, but obviously reach out if you need to. Oh, it's fucking strong. Yeah, compared yeah. to what it was. Yeah. All Good right. Man. Cheers, buddy. Well done, dude. Good lads. Daz, where are you? Just unmute yourself. Morning, JB. Morning, lads. <clears throat> right, lads. Let's get to this. So uh you've already put here that the number one thing is it's basically stress from work. No, uh, it was not stress from work. Um, I suppose I got a wee bit of a kick in the balls. Um, probably a couple of weeks ago, sort of knew it was coming, didn't know the extent of it. And my mum actually has lung cancer. Dad's not struggling well. Um, and we sort of just, it sort of hit us, you know, the, 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 it's now palliative care and that sort of thing. You know, not. I'm not going to use it as an excuse, but it did knock me for six. And I, oh, and I do nice. mean that. That coupled with a, a wee bit of an ankle injury, and then I also messed with my calories. I was on sort of the 2,000, come down to 1,800, because I was doing so well. I just wanted to get results. I was so focused on it. And I was just, like, I heard you saying earlier on, the gold plate reward, and fuck me. That was like another, I was like a slap in the face nearly, because it was so on point for me, you know. Um, I was doing so well, and then everything just went out the fucking wind either, you know. Um, literally, what happened was, is I I stopped doing my morning routine. I stopped. I said, right, I'll just get myself focused. I'll just try and get through my days. I'll just, I'll take some time off work to help my mom, to help my dad, to get things organized. And everything nearly went out the window. You know? And I was actually, I was actually I started at 20 stone when I started this in the 28th day. I went down to 18 two, and I weighed myself yesterday. I was 18 12, and I was fucking fuming, JB. And I'm not gonna. I just, I'm just saying it as it is. That's where I was at. I was like, and I was, and I said to myself here this morning, I was glad it was a wee mastermind catch up because it was like it nearly refocuses me. It nearly, and I need what it, what I need to do. And you're saying there about the one thing that I need to do is I need to reset. 
from the word go again. I need to just reset, get my plans together, get my of all my food, of all my stuff. Of and and I, and, I, and I was listening to somebody else there. And this, this is going to sound to me, this is going to sound strange to me and to sound strange when I say it. There were some of the things, like there's times I am so super motivated and on point with everything. I nearly expect big results regardless. Even if it goes wrong, I'm still doing well. I'm still, things are going better. And I sort of, in my mind, to go, there's there's nearly, I don't know, is there a, um, is there such a, such a thing as an ego complex where I'm going, I should be able to do this. This should, I should be doing better than I'm actually doing. You know, I have that much motivation of very little self doubt because when I'm on point, my God, I'm on point, and I'm and I want to live that way on a more regular basis. Peter, you, Dad, did, so my question is, why are you in the mastermind? I, because I need that support, I need that guidance, I need that sort of accountability, and and I, and I want to be why around lads that? who are as motivated and, and, as me. What? Why do you need that? Why do you need what? That accountability and support. Why do you need that accountability and support? Um, because it, it drives me on. It drives me on. And, and I do suppose that, uh, there's, there's times I feel that I can add to you as well. Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. I, and I learn. I'm always continually learning from you, from others, from everybody around me, you know, all that sort of stuff. That's to achieve what? Yes. To achieve what in the mastermind? Yeah. So you want the support and accountability to achieve, but to achieve what? Well, I have, I suppose, my bigger goals. Give it to uh, me in uh, blunt, uh, in bullet points, Daz. Just give it to uh, me in bullet points. Weight loss, uh, you know, a, a life. Why do you want to lose weight? Um, I want to be faster at the things that I'm doing in terms of the triathlon. I have a bigger goal of a triathlon. An Iron Man, I'm not going to bullshit about that. That's a big goal of mine. That's massive to me, you know what I mean? Why is it massive? Ha- because it has a lifestyle that goes alongside of it. i done a half Iron Man there in 2017 with a friend, and he just completed a full Iron Man there two weeks ago. So what's the lifestyle f- of somebody that's training for a half Iron Man? Up early morning, you know, going in, into the gym, you know, uh, eating right, you know, focused, you know, and everything around about that actually feeds into my way, the way I want to live. You know, I want to be healthy. I want to be fit and, and, and going and doing these things. I want to travel. I want to earn a couple of extra quid, you know. All so everything you've just rattled off, Daz, everything yep. you've just rattled off, like you can, as you're talking and I'm asking you questions and challenging, you're becoming more and more passionate about a, a particular path or direction that you're going. Yep. So yep. every time that you feel like you're going to break on your calories or you're not going to show up for a morning routine or anything like that, I want you to, like, this will be on a podcast next week and it'll be up in the group next week. Come back and watch this video. And literally watch the last two minutes that you've, like, I just asked you the questions. You just went off on it. And then whenever you doubt yourself, watch yourself, listen to yourself. And go again. If anything, like simply listening to this, find this part of the um, video or podcast and listen to it first thing in the morning. So when you wake up, have a piss, have a drink of water, sit there, listen to what you just listen to yourself. Because if you don't, if you if you don't follow what you've just told me you're doing, you essentially like end up becoming a fraud to yourself. You end up like becoming another statistic of someone that says they were going to do something and just talking shit. Yep. That makes sense. It's not, It's hard. So that's that's a that's that's a big fear of mine. That like I'm a big fear of mine is that I'm lying to myself. You are though. You know, that's what it's. That's what it feels like. You know. It, and the and last that's ten a pounds big fear. tell you that you're not living in a half Iron Man life. For you, no. you want a half. I'm. I. I. You want to get a T-shirt and it says. I'm living a half Iron Man's life. Like, that's the lifestyle you've got to adapt. That's the way you've got to approach it. And every time you're doing something that is opposite to that, you then got to turn around and say, well, fucking, I'm full of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hate that that's true. Like, but it's fucking true. Like, you know what I mean? I hate that that's true. You know, I hate that that's, like, that's Truth, right. It's where, true. you know, yeah. It's, and that's it. That's, that's, the, the truth is, that I know that I'm capable of this. However, 
my lifestyle doesn't match up to what I believe is actually true. Does, does so that I always, make sense? The way that I guess I always look at life and the, it, life is a huge battle, right? It's me versus the rest of the world, like everything that's going on. So everything that it throws at you, the temptations, the distractions, the cookies, the sweets, the alcohol, the excuses, the lying in, like all of that, that is life trying to beat you. And every time you, you fall foul of it, every time you tread on a mine and you eat half a pack of fucking cookies or every time that you start drinking or every time that you don't get up and go for that run, they get a point, you lose a point. And then suddenly life's here, life's smashing you to pieces and you're fucking losing here because you're not doing what you said you would. Like that self-evaluation of yourself and what you wanted that's the little reminder. And I often talk about building the subconscious mind. If you listen to that before you go to sleep, if you listen to that when you wake up, that's what you're telling yourself every single time. And then ask yourself, when you look yourself in the mirror at the end of the night, say, am I living that life? And if the answer is no, then you need, that's where you need to go, right, okay, well, I'm in a fucking group for the lads trying to inspire myself. How about inspire other people? Bang, smashed it, smashed it, smashed it. Like I mm -hmm. would challenge you to say that you could be 17 and a half stone by the end of the year. Easy. I, I have a goal and I think it's realistic of being 17, seven. Yep. That's actually a goal of mine Right. for, for the end of the year. I was right. hoping to be 15 in the 15 stones no, around about February really next year, next year, oh, next year, 20, yeah. 20, 2022. That's that was okay. my sort of, when I sort of planned it out and thought about it and that sort of thing, you know, and I was, Fuck me, I was so on point there and whatever else and then like stop worrying about what's happened now. Like what you, what has happened is fucking happened. Stop dwelling on it now. So like when you come off this call, we're like, right, stick on a fucking fridge, 177, stick it on the fridge, remind yourself, find the picture that you hate the most of yourself where you're overweight. Stick it on your fridge. 177, I don't want to fucking look like this. Bang, every single time. Stick it in the cupboards, stick it on your mirror, stick it in your car. I'm fucking square your shit away, ready to go, right? Because you've definitely got the potential and everyone can talk a good game. Everyone can say, I'm going to be this and that and that and the other. Whoa. But that that there is the mentality that you need to start having and building. Fuck yeah, I do, man. I just, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I've, oh, got, I've got oh. to bounce back quicker from the from the, the negatives. Yeah, without a doubt. Don't Thank you, JB. I appreciate your time. Don't, don't let the negatives in. Okay? Don't fucking let them, don't let them in. Cool. All right, Dazza, well done. I look forward to seeing your 17-7 uh, stone picture at the end of the year. Hell yeah. Fuck Goodbye. hell yeah. And by the way, that dressing gown's even worse than Craig's. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Saturday morning is always dressing gown came for me, for sure, man. You know, so fair enough. Uh, Right, I've got Thank four you. lads left. We've got Rob, John, Victor, Bryn. We're going to have to be rapid, guys, so I'm going to ask you to be blunt and to the point. Right, Rob Pitt. Hello. How's it going? Uh, pretty good, actually. I'm um, doing all right. Thank you. Good man. All right, answer to the question. Number one thing holding you back? Bad planning of what I'm going to do in the short term. Okay, in what way? Well, like... For instance, um, I do it getting carpet put down in this in this place uh, next week, and I went and started the kitchen because I didn't think about the fact I had to uh, redecorate one of the walls in the living room before the carpet was fitted. So now I've got two rooms being decorated at once. Well, I've got three actually, but it's, it's <laughs> terrible, terrible planning. Um, I'm not terrible thinking ahead plan. enough in, in the short term. I'm thinking good in the long term. I'm thinking well, and in the outline, I'm thinking well. But in the short term, the details, I'm not thinking it through properly. Okay. So attention to detail. It sounds like it, yeah. What are you going to do about it? Well, I've asked you, that's a start. I only re realised yesterday that was a problem. Um, um, and I've sort Nothing of... Nothing to do about your house. You're fucked in that respect. Yeah. In terms of uh, moving forward, how are you going to start thinking more about attention to detail? Well... I, I, all I can all I can try to do is keep it in the forefront of my mind. Um, that's all. That's, that's that's my only concept so far. Of how I can how I can progress with this? Keep it in the forefront of my mind that I must think before leaping instead of diving in and just brute force and ignorance and things. Think more logical than emotional. Think more logical than emotional. Do you know what I mean by that? Um, well, I know the difference, but I don't know what you mean by it. Okay, so I think a lot of people get super excited. Like, so when you're decorating. You probably get like super excited, right? In terms of um, 
like fucking gotta get this done, this done, this done. And we act off emotions. Um, we, we act off the bat, as my mum would say, like just very right. quickly. We don't yeah. think logically through, yeah. we don't visualize. And if I do this and then I do this, then fuck, I've, I've, that's not gonna happen. So connecting all of the dots together in a logical sense that makes sense. Like I think when people make decisions or planning emotionally, they don't really think about the finer details. It's just, oh, that would do, that would do. But so for example, we have a system called Overwatch. And Overwatch is when you take your diary and you know your planner of the week, your timetable, yeah. it's like on a Sunday night, what I will do is literally visualize, my, I will visualize my day. So I'll visualize myself going to jujitsu. I'll visualize myself coming back, having a shower, getting changed, going into the office, working in the office till three, coming out of the office, coming home, going to the golf range, coming back, picking the kids up. Like, and I literally go through that day and I do mm -hmm. that for each day. And it literally only take me like 10, 15 minutes. But what it does is goes, ah, oh, fucking, there's a conflict there. And it identifies distractions or issues or things that are going on for me. So I've identified- I've got a problem with that. Pardon? I've got a problem with that. I can't picture things in my head. I, I've got that thing where you can't see images in your head. Um, <laughs> how I think's a bit different. Okay. Um, um, I'll try and think my way through things. We'll try and do it on a day basis. You try and do, do it on a daily basis. So in the evening, just look at your diary and run through. The, look at your diary visually, just like it's written there in front of you. Yeah. So just make sure you've kind of got it planned. Like okay. make sure like what you're doing is like um, make sure you, what you do is realistic for what you've written down. Yeah. I I do that a little bit at the moment. I should probably do it more detail more detail i would probably challenge that you're not if you fucked up with your house well I, d I did write down that i've got to decorate this but i didn't think through that i'd have i had to decorate it in a, a better order you know i, I should have there was a better way of doing it that's where i think we just live and learn rob 100 you just take that experience but i think like that's more external stuff I, I think more like what i'm really interested in is you doing that for you in in your life in your health your eating I know eating and sleeping are two of your main focuses at the minute. I've been doing better than that lately. Yeah, good. So keep the focus up on that thing. Like that's just probably sounds like one fuck up that you've made up at home. Okay. Um, I, 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 okay. I'll, I'll, I, maybe, maybe I am over, overthinking this small detail then. I, 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 thanks. All right. Keep your head up, mate. Cheers. John, have we done, John? Oh, there you are, John. Yeah, John Perry. Go for it. Same question, dude. Um, for me, mate, it's, I guess it's, uh, I just feel like a bit disconnected from, from like my goals. Like everything's maxed. <laughs> I've, got, I've got max here like in my ear, sorry. Um, so basically what it is for me is like, I've had a really good year so far and I've like ticked off a lot of things and I'm just like now like, where do I go from here? I just feel like I, I need something to what change. What have you done about it? Uh, nothing so far. <laughs> you know me? Uh, you know, I have sat and tried to think of some things that I want to do, if you like, but I can't really come up with anything at the minute. But why do you have to do anything? Why can't just the maintenance of life be something that you're striving for? Like, like it's all good getting to a place, but at some points there are going to be points in our life, like what Craig says, you know, we was talking about like, why do you sometimes you just go into work and you get work done and you come back, right? Like, yeah. why can't you just make sure that the rest of the year you don't slip? Like, we just you want to maintain a really good standard of living and mental a mental space and emotional space to Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose like you get caught up, always wanting to chase something. So <laughs> can't always chase, mate. Don't always chase like this year for me i'm just like i'm fucking done with the year I'm just i just want to get like for me i just want to just like not not plateau but stay in a level pegging like, yeah you know what I mean? I'm, just, I'm not i'm not trying to achieve anything huge i'm just getting through life i just want to settle into the house i want to take some like four months of almost just like looking after my lads in the mastermind like looking after a couple of lads just running a seminar and then 2022 go all in like you know then start getting creative about what am i going to do next year the way that i look at the rest of this year is almost building up 
the systems, the mind space, the head space, the emotional space ready to go for next year. That, that, that's for me. That doesn't have to be your thing, but don't put yourself under pressure like you've constantly got to be chasing something. Do you know what I mean? Being a great dad, being a great jujitsu instructor, being uh, great at your work, being uh, great in terms of the support. Like you, you have made a real good, amazing U-turn from that a very difficult spot from what you went through. And it's been amazing to see that progress. And it's just like, just enjoy life, man. Enjoy the kids strangling you. And, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but there doesn't always have to be that chase. Yeah. You know, just because I always talk about finding it, like, you, you are somebody that has challenged yourself, you know, has done stuff. No. It, like, it's about like, okay, great. Let's get to the end of the year, be solid. Okay, I can do that, I think. That's... Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it... yeah, it's just, obviously, like you see, you get into that rhetoric and just like, obviously, you see everybody else like setting goals and stuff in the group and it's just like, right, what do I need to do now? What do I need to do now? And you get caught up in my hamster wheel, I guess. Yeah, you do. I, I, I like the, the 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 fourth quarter challenge I'll be launching next week. So that's something that you can focus on for sure. So that's something you can work towards. It's something that everybody can work towards. It's, it, it's something that I feel that, that I've put together to improve people's consistency. So it's going to be something to look forward to. And that might be your thing. You know, it's going to be T-shirt at the end of it for those that show up. Uh, and might, that might be just a challenge that you need. All right. Cheers, buddy. Hi, right, my man. Good to see you. How's, uh, are you closer to your brown belt yet or not? Uh, who knows? Who knows? That'd be, be tighter than a duck's ass with these belts, aren't we? So. Oh, no, mate. <laughs> Fucking hell. Tell me about it. Fucking yeah. Jesus. Um, I did an open mat on Monday. First time I probably been, like... First two lads, I fucking ripped through. And then the second four lads, I, I was so exhausted because it's, you know, it's specific training. Yeah. I had nothing left. So that that's, like, that's a vicious circle, mate, isn't it? Yeah, man, fucking hell. Yeah. Um, be good. It'd good, be good to see you soon, dude. So hopefully you can make one of the mates and uh, we'll have a catch. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, aiming to get down to one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Go, 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 go. go. Oh, oh. God, mate. <sighs> Baby. Don't worry, fucking hell. Hey, there's real life. Are they all right? Yeah, he's good. He's all right. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. <laughs> oh, bless him. Right, you go and sort it out, mate. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. It's all go. Victoria? Hello, good morning. Hello, Jim. And hello, How guys. How are you, man? Um, I'm okay. I have to say that uh, I'm much better than I, I should be. I'm recently going through a kind of marriage uh, uh, crisis. But I have to say, if it was in a year ago, I think I would not handle it in this way how I'm handling it right now. Okay. So that's a good thing. Um, I had a kind of uh, down point a month ago, a month, one and a month, a half uh, months ago, when uh, basically I think I reached my, my all area of my life, the, the maximum, and I think I exhausted myself. So I went on sick leave for four, four weeks. And uh, I, I used this time to reconnect with myself again. And I had my reassessment and uh, I determined where I want to go. So I did my plannings. I, uh, I looked at also my relationship and uh, somehow used the principles what I, what I learned here throughout the program since I joined last year. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking for that and doing the, the positive things I, uh, and try to focus on what I can control in my life. Um, also, in towards the relationship which I'm, I'm going through with my wife, um, I'm planning my life. If she wants to join, she joins. If not, then I go ahead because I think otherwise I cannot do it. So if there will be a moment when there will be a chapter to be turned, then it's need to be turned, but uh, it's not decided yet. That's probably the difficult part that it's still a bit pending or hanging in the air. And uh, that makes it time to time difficult. But then I try to put on the side uh, the negative thoughts, not to come over on me and take control of me. So that's why I, where I am. So um, I think I feel much, much strong. Maybe yeah. now I'm getting a bit less, uh, getting a bit more emotional that I'm talking about this because it's really touching me. Uh, but otherwise, um, reassessed also my work relationship in terms of uh, uh, had the opportunity somehow, you know, life gave me. The, the constellation that uh, I have been in a higher responsibility. I did my maximum. I proved for myself and also to my superiors that 
what I'm capable of doing. And, and somehow I received a kind of uh, uh, safe that, you know, a new person came in. It was a bit of difficult as well. Basically, I had to step back from this responsibility, give handover to this person. So now he became my supervisor. Uh, but I, I took it also that this is an opportunity for me now, giving the, what is essentially needed for the work and focus on myself, on my personal development, also in career and also in private life, where I can go. So use this extra time or extra capacity for something else. Yeah. Okay, man. Yeah. So Victor, the one thing I noticed since um, like listening to you is definitely much more decisive with the way that you're thinking and the direction that you like to go and go. I think the previous time we spoke, I think you were in that lost state, you're at, like the transition. I feel That's like true. there is a plan going into this new chapter for you. Um, I think there is definitely some emotional decisions going on in terms of yes. things that are going to happen, but for me, that's just the evolve. Uh, it's how we evolve, right? Things evolve naturally, like paths go different ways. That's what happens. And I think you're more than prepared, ready for that in a positive way or a negative way, either which way that's going to go. But I, what I'm really pleased to hear is um, how decisive you are, like how much certainty you have about that path. And I think that's something since I've known you has always been up in the air. It's been up there and it kind of feels yes. like, you, you, you've you been true to yourself, I think is the word, um, I, I would say. And, and it's great to hear, Victor, as well, 100%. So um, if you reach, if you, if you need to reach out at any point with the stuff that's going on, you, I know you do anyway, which Thank is you. great. So, you yeah. know, I appreciate it. Thank you. I think it's the, the other key word I think you mentioned as well, that, you know, I joined the, the Mastermind program uh, a year ago. And I think now I'm reaching that point that I'm having to have this conscious living consciously the life and doing consciously the things and as you said this maybe is not a exhalation but you know it's a steady upcoming so that's yeah. right yeah, yeah. It's, it's exciting for you because it's almost like i always can see when someone's about to start a brand new chapter and and i think that's you so there's not going to be lots of potential for you in, in in that direction we have to get you to the uk for a meetup as well I will try to do my best. So it's like, with the COVID, I hope that it's the situation with travel points of view will be better because I'm, I'm in Luxembourg. Yeah. But I, I would love to really go there and then experience it. I, I watched back the, the latest uh, uh, meeting which you had and uh, it was really inspiring. And uh, yeah, I think that would give you an extra plus, you know, to having uh, having the, the, the social contact and direct contact with the people to whom we are sharing this brotherhood and with you. And, and I, I'm looking forward. So if I have the opportunity, I definitely I will do it. So Good man. Thank Be brilliant. And thanks, for, thanks for the thank you for coming on, Victor. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Good thank man. you, guys. Uh, last but not least, Bryn. Hello. Oh, wow. The audio is terrible, Bryn. Two seconds. Oh, that's better. It's very light. Like, very light. That's my shit headset. There you go. That's it. It did look shit, to be fair. Cool. Um, how's it going? Come on, a bit of time. Fucking, um, yeah, good. Better. Better than it was. Good. Good. Yeah. Did you get your job? Say again? Did you get your job? How's the job going? Um, <laughs> yeah, three months in, uh, the guy that recruited me left two weeks after I started. The project manager that I got put under left four weeks after I started. So now I'm doing part of his job and part of the other folks' job as well. Winner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, cool. So same question to you. What's the number one thing? Um, I wrote it down because I keep I keep bouncing around with them. Stupid idea. It's over. It's sort of like over planning again, you know, where I commit to too much, uh, over planning, conditioning versus ability. So I'm like, I just am not, not connecting with some of the things I'm putting down. I'm like, I'm, I'm putting stuff down because I think I need to be putting it down and, and then not doing it and then beating myself up because I've not done that one thing. Whereas like that smile file that Jason Laird just said a minute ago, instantly connected. And I'm like, I do loads of positive things during the day. And I'm, I focus on the, the one or two shitty negatives, and I'm like, actually, that's stupid. So that's yeah, brain works, mate. That, like the brain only ever focuses. It's like you get a hundred compliments and one negative, 
and the only thing you think about mm. is a negative comment, right? So I think like for yeah. you, definitely start writing things down on the notes, keep at like the, the smile journal, if you like, or whatever you want to call it, your, your wins, um, your win journal. Um, uh, I think, yeah, nice, good, good stuff. I think as well, mate, like, are you, are you pla so over planning? So just literally like, if you could only focus on one thing for this month, what would it be? Like literally, if you could just plan one thing, what would it be? It's my swim at the end of September. Oh, great. So literally, mate, all you got to do is just focus on, like, bin everything else off. Just focus on, like, you, what, you, what you have is your set core structure, okay? That's your fort. You, you, you protect that structure. And anything else that you've got going on that you're trying to achieve, like, cool. But the priority is swimming. Like, just focus purely on the swimming and and reduce the level of expectation and bring it back down here. Mm, yeah, yeah. Otherwise you just keep pissing yourself off over and over and over again. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Oh, it, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, no, so I, take, like, I think you put the, pre like you put the pressure on yourself. Self pressure is, is one of those things that we just put ourselves under. It's like, Oh God, I'm not doing good enough. More pressure, more pressure, more pressure. And it makes us more and more and more like, anxious and more depressed and more highlights more that we don't focus enough on ourselves or we're not doing as good as Billy or Joel or fucking Harry, like, cause they're putting up stuff. So I've got to do stuff. Doesn't know. It doesn't happen like that. Do you know what I mean? I started listening to an awesome audio book called the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Oh yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Just, yeah. just a epiphany after like, you know, when you really connect with something, I'm like, wow. That's yeah, yes, yeah, it, yeah, really, yeah, real, real, real clarity. Like you know, I mean, you heard about my amazing swim where I lost my watch and my phone in the same like event, and that was <laughs> just yeah. And then that cost us like hundreds of pounds, and then the car you just can't died. Do about it though, can you? That's the thing. It's just like, what's the point in getting stressed? But it's gone. Like the car died, the car's just cost us a grand. So, you know, and we're trying to save for a deposit for a house, so like kicking the tits, but it's like, okay, there's nothing to do about it. So, you know, what's the point in getting upset about it? And that's definitely the mindset that's changed. You know, I've stopped, I've stopped, you know, beating myself up, getting slashing out. It's just like, okay, move on. 100%. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I hundred percent. Um, good attitude as well to have, man. It's good, it, like because then you only focus on your controllables and you let go of all of the uncontrollables, right? So it, I think it's absolutely essential. Um, good, Bryn. Yeah, nice. Like I like that. Build that. Focus just purely on the swim, right? Just keep fucking living the life, living the dream, and and, and pushing forward. Take the pressure off. Be today. <laughs> Say that again. I'm going for a swim. Mike B's on holiday down in Paynton. And so I've uh, latched onto his holiday. I'm going to go and smash a swim tomorrow and meet up for oh, a coffee. Good. Yeah, I love that. Love it. Who? I missed that because it cut out. Who's down there? Mike B. Oh, is he? Yeah. Fucking holiday again. Jesus Christ. Paying him too That's much. That's side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, have a, get a picture of both of you and stick it up in the group. Will do. Will do. Good to see you, mate. Well done. Thanks. Take it easy, JB. See you soon. Boys, thanks for sticking on to the end. Well done, boys. Good to see you all. Is there anyone that desperately needs to come on that didn't and wants to wait to the end? Everyone good? Everyone good? Everyone good? Sweet as enough. Right, guys, I look forward to seeing you next next month. For your success stories, this will be up in the group next week. Um, I'm going to be sorting out all of the courses, so it would be super easy to find, like I've mentioned. Uh, mental resilience videos coming from next week um talking a lot about what we've been talking about here actually um and then obviously if you want to cover this course in birmingham uh, on the saturday 16th um let me know as soon as possible all right see you soon take care